sure it changes. Change the screen start by six seconds. There we go. All of a sudden, it feels like we do, do, do a rocket launch or something. I mean, I've been on doing this with you for like 200 times now, and this feels different for some reason. It's like the first time again. This one's going to be special, girl. This one's going to yeah. be special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've been talking about that piece that had the replacement. Knocked my mic out. Oh yeah, you, you pulled it out. Now yeah, you're back, I, I back in again. Time. Yeah, I need a new Reaper yeah. ad. I've been on them. Get me something else. But um, yeah. yeah, it's been a long time. But uh, yep. they're always so busy. They're such great people, guys. Guys and gals yep. here. Tell them that you will record one yourself. Yeah, I should. <laughs> I should when I get some time. When you get all the Reaper minis, you can, you can make your well, own. Man. So yeah. they're... they're they're not waiting. They have two uh, uh, containers for Bones Five that are not there yet, still. Wow. And they um, they're just going to start shipping stuff without them because it's taking so long now. You know, yeah. the last two is, is that like a bunch of Bones Kickstarters you get? In yeah, we're we're going to get like four, five hundred figures. Wow. We, yeah, from the Kickstarter, it's almost been two years since that one. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it takes a while to for the two. Yeah, to from the original the Kickstarter. Stuff. So. I just Look at that! The... First time chat person! Yeah. Wow! Uh, listen, I gotta give you a VIP badge. My apologies. Uh... I'm the VIP. Very, <laughs> <laughs> very VIP. Yep. Get that, give you that little diamond. Unfortunately, though, I have 80 VIP badges. I got so many that have turned into uh, point things in the last couple of weeks that I don't have any that made it to second. Plus, I don't, like, I don't like doing it during the stream either. Yeah, I and I don't, I, I, I hear you on that. It's all totally good. And I don't like actually um, typing too much during the stream because you'll yeah. get the keyboard. Yeah. What's up, Rox? Good to see you, Rox. always a good thing. Everyone's looking forward also to getting this great uh, controller games Kickstarter for their 8th edition. Yeah. Are they up to the 8th edition? I think it's 8th edition. Of, yeah. of CNC? Wow. Yeah. Oh, I should have given you the Castle Keeper's Guide map I did for that. I'm sorry? I should have given you the Castle Keeper's Guide map I did for that. Oh, There's always that, more oh no, I haven't. I, I, I saw it okay. on the post. Oh, I have okay. it. The full page. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is neat. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I have that. Definitely. Hey, that would be appropriate for... for your sponsor. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you worked for Troll Lord. I haven't yet. So, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh... What's up, Dwayne? Not good, good to see you. Yeah, I, I, I took... It's not a... Yeah, I, I pulled it off of Facebook. I know you posted, you, you posted it somewhere, listen, I, I saw it, I was like, Ooh. oh, I, I could do better than that. Hold on, let me, you, come on, you're Lord Kasumbo, I can give you a high-red version of that. Yeah, and, and now we have Dropbox for that. You, you pay Dropbox a lot of money to... Yes, but I don't have Dropbox do open like on, my, on my main computer, it's only open on my laptop now. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to suck up the yeah, I may be able to, I, I mean, I'll risk, I'll, if it's in Dropbox, I'll risk it. Uh, How about Discord? Do you want me to drop it in a link to Discord? Yeah, Discord. Discord would be yeah. great. Okay. You drop it in the Discord. Yeah. Thanks, so big deal for me, maybe, so. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you, can, you, connect, yeah. <laughs> you connect it to me in Dropbox, that's dangerous enough. Yeah, no, oh, my And have it open on stream is very dangerous. Yeah. Very, very dangerous. All right, so I got it up here. Hopefully it's under uh, the 10 meg file. Nine, uh, nine, well, as long as <laughs> it's under 100 megabytes. It's just under 100. There it is. <laughs> that is tiny. Yeah. Yeah, we, 
you know, for Adam and my maps, I mean, that's... We, we, we have to talk about, yeah, we have to have an episode talking about file sizes, because that's like, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's a problem in itself, yeah. I got it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And I, that might be the one that the public hasn't seen yet. Uh, awesome. Because it has an extra oh. one on there. Oh, cool. Very, very cool. And you posted a, a bunch of them individually on Facebook and stuff. That look, they look absolutely awesome. Hey, what's up, Nas? I get a very horn-esque feeling when Can I you all hear us? I'm just, uh, I'm hoping that they can hear us. Hello, Troy. Oh, yep, awesome. Welcome. Yep. So, as you can see, the Naz has a, a founder badge right there, and uh, he's in 34 months. 34 yeah, months. 34 months of subscriber. So, Tim is, the, Tim is the first nine, like, inner circle of friends that uh, started uh, subbing way back, almost three years ago. Yep. It's like Twitch has not even been born yet, and he's already subbed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. He'll be there. For that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's super cool. Make sure I got everything open here. Look at that, we already got a follower. We don't know this, but Nas was the one that told Twitch that they need to actually start a service. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, it was different, like, three years ago. I would go on and on, on, a, on a certain night and stream a D and D game, and there may have been 50 D and D streams. Go on now, there's 500. Yeah. On any given night. What's up, Mike? There's our, one of our giveaway sponsors hey. for the night, the great Mike Disney. Hello. Wonderful to have you here. Hey, tea time with Taryn. What's up, Taryn? Doc. Well, it's gonna be a really good show tonight. Can't wait. By the way, Thursday night is the next giveaway for Infinite uh, Dimensions games. Yeah, you know, this this, uh, this that arena you see right now, that's in our hands. We're gonna paint that up and uh, have that ready for Virtual Braille Con for the Grand Melee. So it's already printed. Yes, oh, it's already wow. printed. Yes, it's already printed. Uh, actually, I got um, I got uh, Mike Saxton, Retro Gamer, mm -hmm. to print it for me. Yeah. So cool. Cool, Taryn. Great. Yeah, it's going to be a, an introductory night with yeah, a lot. Maybe. We're going to bounce all over the place. And then, yep. already have the next date set up for the next show. We're going to do these once a month and uh, go to different guests and topics. And look at that. It's 7.51. So yep. it's, it's like usual. Uh, we're going to be uh, not too early. Hey, Walt. <laughs> yeah, special welcome to Alyssa. That's perfect. Yeah. Train going. That's crazy. 
And now I got, of course, I got a new wow. entry screen. Yeah, ah, it's right. that's early. We started the hype yeah, train. Before yeah, there's we a hype on. train, but at six minutes before we're supposed to go on now. So, mm -hmm. all right, and we welcome to our entry screen. And I'm uh, honored tonight to have uh, Melissa Faden and Anna Meyer join me for a brand new show. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut for most of this, everyone. No, no, so. no, no, you do. <laughs> no, you know. no, 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 no. The name of this song, by the way, is For the King uh, by Dark, uh, Dark Fantasy Studio. So, and, and, and uh, listen, you put a lot of your stuff on Humble Bundle too, correct? You do Humble projects? Occasionally, yeah. yeah. I, I, I do them mostly with Rocker. Okay. So, uh, cause uh, I got, uh, I got Dark Fantasy's, all their music off of Humble, and it's awesome. You know, so that's where I got this a lot of this music from, and it, it's a great cause that they have set up, and it's nice to be able to uh, to get uh, some great product off of it for, and do and have a good cause as well. So, what's up, working? Tino, what's going on? That's a good question, Jason. I'm going to tell you that. Uh, I'll answer. Hey, that's actually yeah. first question is actually for me. <laughs> yeah, that's, funny. that's awesome. That's perfect, <laughs> and I think it's a very, very good question because that was one of the things I wanted to to ask. Meaning, a miniature-based uh, gamer, what kind of maps do you want to be? That's a that's a that's a great uh, a great question. Yep. So it's perfect. So thank you so much for asking wonderful questions already before we started the show. So yeah. And in a way, you can even look at a miniature table set up as a map. That's true, and that's what it's I do. Form of, I mean, it's, a yeah. form of, it's a form of map. And, Absolutely. And, and yeah, that's one of the questions we want to dig into later in the show is what is a map, actually? What constitutes a map? Uh, that's another great one is yeah, fantasy, what actually is a map. Yeah, yeah from, from a fantasy tabletop role-playing game perspective, but it's kind of universal. So I, I have my own definition that I've kind of studied from various sources and we'll hear where Alyssa thinks and, and so close to hopping out over level one so uh all right, I'm gonna come on early four minutes early normally we're oh, in the wow. crew too Woo! and we'll just hey. uh, yeah why not so uh, hey George yep good evening everyone thank you for coming on tonight we already got almost 80 people on before you even started wow. I'm JK Lord Gazumba brand new show um and I am only the producer here. It was, and uh, it's, I have the honor well, you're of. You're a co host, uh, at, co -host. Least. <laughs> at least. Yes, um, yeah. I have the honor of uh, introducing both uh, great Alyssa Faden and Anna B. Meyer to, to the Fancy Mapping Show. Uh, Anna and Alyssa came together with a great concept. I'm like, this is awesome. I can't wait to produce this and, uh, yeah. and, and bring this out to everyone. So let's introduce both Anna and Alyssa, and talk, tell us a little bit about yourselves, um, and then we'll get into the meat of, uh, of what we want to talk about and how, what direction we want the show to go. Alyssa, welcome. Yes. You Thank see, this is where I come on the show and I go, I'm Alyssa Faden, and I draw <laughs> maps. No, you can do way better than that. We, we, I've been around, I've heard you talk. <laughs> uh, so, uh, hi everyone, I'm truly honored to be here. I know I'm the noob in the room, oh. I already feel like family. Um, so I'm Alyssa Faden and I am a professional cartographer and I said that like I'm professing that I'm an alcoholic or something <laughs> but um, I, I've been drawing uh, maps professionally for about the last 15, 20 years, something like that. In the last 10 years or so, I draw maps for Monte Cook, Cobalt Publishing, Trollord Games uh, uh, and various uh, other sort of publishers. I'm best known for my city maps. And, uh, but I also do a lot of overland maps um, of different styles. And the main thing that I bring is I love to just do stupid, manic detail. If you're looking at a map and going, holy heck, did she really draw that? Then it's probably one of mine. Uh, that's yep. what I like to do. I do everything by hand. Um, I was originally ink on paper. Um, I started coloring actually for Cobalt Publishing, funny enough, yeah. um, digitally, because I drew something and I was like, this is Cobalt. I really need to step up my game. So I went off and got myself a Wacom uh, tablet to color it. And that converted me. Now I draw everything and color everything digitally, but I still do everything by hand. And yeah, I have a lot of fun doing it. Oh. <clears throat> 
that's fantastic. And now everyone, now you know why I wanted Alyssa because I wanted a true professional cartographer on the show. Oh, so God. that has oh, a God. way longer, long, ex more extinguished CV <laughs> in this business than I do. So, so, so now, well, it's 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 awesome. Thank you, Alyssa, for wanting to do this with us. It's 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 it's. You know, I'm, I'm honored. Honestly, I'm truly honored. You know, yeah. and I, I don't know how long you and I have known each other. It's been a while. Ten years, and I think. And we Something met like at that. Gen Con, and yeah, the minute like, we met, we clicked, and yep. we just mm -hmm. love to talk. Yeah, we love to talk about the hobby. We love to talk about maps, and I think this show is was destined to be right. Oh right yes, back when yep. we first mm -hmm. met. Yep, yep, we've said it, and but then we have to have someone to produce it and do all the technical difficult stuff and so on. And 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 now when I've been on Jay's show so often, I thought this is a match made in heaven so to speak cool. so Thank jay you, knows Anna. how to do to do twitch and and be an awesome host and and all that so so we can kind of get the stuff and my idea when i invited Alyssa and, and asked jay to 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 come up with this is to to have a show where we talk about fantasy cartography from both a user perspective but also from a cartography perspective so so this will i don't think this will be the show if you want to know exactly what menu to to press and what buttons to do in photoshop as well this is probably not going to be the show there there is a lot of tutorials meaning and and Alyssa and me have done tutorials and i'm sure we're going to more do more tutorials so this is not this is more show to be inspired to to get ideas of what to do how to to go about doing them what tools to use and how to use your maps in your games etc a lot of dimensions and publishing maps and style different styles we want to have guests on and and a whole bunch of stuff so that was, was my kind say, of idea you, yeah. you, you could actually watch me streaming and it's still not the show to watch to how to use photoshop because i'm like eh, is this system in you <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah it, it's so funny people ask me oh you should stream when you work and i realize watching paint dry is literally more interesting than watch me do what i do so a lot of things are so boring that it must be terrible to to to, to watch but we'll see yeah on that too so yeah and we're going a lot of different directions mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the great thing about this show is is we're completely open to the topics and the discussion, uh, whether yep. it's whether it's incorporating into VTTs or or special guests or a specific topic. Um, you know, we're, we're we're really excited about this, and yeah. um, I'm looking forward to it because I know it's only going to maps are becoming so important, especially in the VTT world, right? Mm -hmm. They just are yep. because of the way people yep. are playing remotely. Um, Plus, everyone, and we talked about this on our Legends and Lore on Wednesday night, the world of Greyhawk is so poorly documented in maps for cities. Yeah. It is, right? And it's just, it, that's it's an area that is really, look at that, the Magnificent well, they, Pax, they, we know who that is. John! <laughs> yeah. Hey John, good to see awesome. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very, very yeah, we nice. Have to, we have to tell TSR and Wizard of the Coast never hired Alyssa to do the city maps. That's why they have crappy city maps comparatively. No, some of them are actually not that bad. And I think a lot of them, the problem is not the, the cartography. The problem was that this initial city concept was not developed. They hadn't right. looked at what the city was actually going to look like. They just told someone to just make a map basically. Well, well, and I think we might get into this even a little bit later on in the show yeah. when we start talking about what is a map. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, this is one of the reasons why there's certain publishers I haven't worked with, because when you think about that, I'm doing 60, 80 hours plus on a map. Yeah. Most publishers don't want to do that, right? I mean, if I'm going to draw, um, you know, a, a city map, I'm going to give this little shop here a backyard and I'm going to put some little crates in the backyard and I'm yep. going to have put all of these little stories in there, like a little mm -hmm. sprinkle of salt yep. for each house, each building, each store, you know, and a, a lot of publishers don't want that. They want functional. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just give me a square. <clears throat> this is yep. not, this is not mm -hmm. about you drawing a garden. This is all about the labels that you put on yep. the map. Yeah. And so this is why there's certain clients that I can work with mm -hmm. and certain projects where I personally am allowed to shine. But otherwise, yeah. you know, if it's yeah. a 10-hour map, I'm probably not the one working on it. Yeah, because that's one of the things that you realize that there is can be too much information, especially depending on what play style there is. Because a lot of DMs, they want an overview map and then they want to be able to insert a little forest or, or a little stream or whatever they need for the story 
then and there at the game table. And, and a lot of publishers also want to have a cool looking map that doesn't give away too much detail so they can fill in with whatever modules they want to design later, so to speak. And that makes it real tricky. So, so maps, there is a lot of backsides and, 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 and devious <laughs> kind of things that needs to go into map making, especially if it is for published product line that needs to be filled out later, so to speak. There's a lot of, and, and that might go for, for your game style too. If you fly by the seat of your pants as a DM and you do a lot of, of theater of the mind, you just want to drum up with whatever cool little train feature your story needs that evening. And, and so, so then a pre-made map with all the details might hamper you in, in your game style or vice versa. If you're a DM that wants to plan out where the orcs have their ambush and, and where they live and, and, and where the beholder lair might be and where the dragon lives, etc., and and so on. And what they sell in the market in the big city then you want the perfect detailed terrain that looks like a satellite photo or vis visualize the whole area, so to speak. So it's it's very different. A lot of these topics, I think, we will touch over episodes, so to speak, because this is supposed to be a monthly show. That's yes. the idea. And that yeah. the great thing is, is we're going to have fun with this and go with mm -hmm. whatever direction the questions go to. Yeah. Uh, and and yep. and and, uh, and we can always come back to things as well. Real quick, yep. Yep. two giveaways tonight. Courtesy, one of our great uh, friend and sponsor, the Mike Disney, in Overgord print. Mike actually has, right, Mike, you actually have an Overgord figure that, that Reaper sent you. We're all still waiting for ours because of the holdup. <laughs> but yeah, a, a so signed awesome. Mike Disney Overgord print and a $25 gift certificate from Troller Games. So we'll do two giveaways um, tonight. <laughs> Uh, and uh, hopefully we see Chuck hop on at some point too uh, from Chuck yeah. I don't know he's mm -hmm. been pretty swamped, but um, maybe we'll see uh, Chuck come on and say hello as well. All right, so you want to hit up? We want to hit up some examples. Mm -hmm. That's what we'd like to do yeah. first here. Now I got some new screens. Hopefully these all work. Yeah. All right. We'll test. test yes, yeah, so we're gonna test the first one here. So um, and I have I have this up. There, look at that. I already have it up already. So, Ooh, yeah, yep. I want to talk about an example. This is recent, right, uh, Alyssa? Yeah, you can zoom way in there, too, because they're full-page, half-page, quarter panels, and I just decided to do them all on one canvas. Yeah. Uh, because why not? It's super sexy, so let's do it. Yeah. Um, this was for Trollord Games, a Castle Keeper's Guide. They contacted me and asked if I would be willing to draw 12 maps, basically from a hamlet, and a Thorpe and a village mm -hmm. all the way through to a mega city. And I was like, hell yeah, of course I will. Um, and it, you know, it got to a point where if you scroll a little bit to the left there, that it, it, you know, it was like, okay, so now draw a tower. A, yeah, you like, have a 3D so, cutout and, yeah. and all that. Well, and yeah. like, so if I draw a tower from above, that's that's gonna look kind of boring. That's mm -hmm. gonna look like a circle on a, yeah. on a canvas of green. So someone on my Twitch channel at the time was like, you should do a cutaway and why not do a block? And I was like, first, I don't do cutaways. And secondly, what's a block? And as someone <laughs> who does castle stuff all of the time, maybe that I should be a little bit of a shame. But that there is the first cutaway I've ever drawn in my life. Wow. And I had so much fun with it. And as I was drawing <laughs> it, I was like, I am not going to do another cutaway. I am not going to do another semi-isometric sort of view here. <laughs> this is the last time I do it. And God damn, look at the panel next to it. I ended up doing the same again for the Martin Bailey. You know, yeah, I'm like, mm -hmm. a Martin Bailey from above is just two yeah. circles next to each other. Right. So I'm going to yeah. have to go a little bit out here. I must say for me, the first time you did that, it's turned out really, really well. And so first of all, what was the meaning? Did they dictate what, what, the style choice, meaning this to me reminds me of the best of Harn work when it comes to the Harn world in, in coloration and style and stuff. Was that an inspiration or, or, or was the, the, uh, the idea of going with the style? Honestly, getting through the project was my main motivation. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good motivation to do it on time and, and, and on budget, so to speak. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, this I've been the, there. This is from the brand new uh, a Kickstarter, yep, right? Yep, so this, yep. is, this is... Yep. This is brand spanking new that uh, mm -hmm. everyone uh, like myself and all who, who uh, went in the Troller Games Kickstarter yeah. is going to get all these maps which is fantastic yeah, um, I'm not even sure if this thing has gone out in print yet, they no. put the PDF out a short while ago, this is super fresh yep, 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chuck's going to um, be upset he missed this, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is... Uh, yeah, so I mean, honestly, the, the, there was I didn't really look to any of the styles. Um, you know, part of this was I don't do twelve maps in one time. It, it I just don't work that way. But I love troll lord games, and so when they say, "Will you do twelve maps?" I was like, "Yep, sign me up. Let's do this thing." And I, but they also Whoops. said, "If you have something already that you have done, we'll buy it." And so the Metropolis, that thing right there, so I had that already done, not colored. And so I actually used my own work as inspiration. And mm -hmm. actually, each that the town is a smaller version of that. The, 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 the town with walls is a smaller version of that. Do I have it, that? It's all on there. Um, oh, okay. And yep. it ended up being the, the Thorpe and the Hamlet were a small part in the top left corner of the metropolis. And so I kind of ended up just reverse that engineering is you the whole thing. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Reuse uh, it. That's, that's, smart. that's smart. Yeah, yeah. so if you go mm -hmm. top left, you'll actually see that single abode is yeah. Yeah. on the Thorpe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And then the Thorpe is actually within the village. And then the village is within the town. But this oh. is cool because you can also see how a settlement grows from tiny village to big city by doing yeah, this. It's, it's, it's a perfect example. It, for that it was too. a wonderful, wonderful exercise. And honestly, yep. that's that's one of the things I love to do. Yep. You know, we ended up like just with the Thorpe and the Hamlet and the village. We mm -hmm. had little stories going. I'd love to draw my stuff like live and we've got people hanging out, much like yep. this. And people mm -hmm. are saying, oh, you should do a fisherman. Oh, you should do this. And so we were just like <laughs> throwing these little things and they were like, well, what if the fisherman had a fancy woman that was just down the way? And so we ended mm -hmm. up drawing all of these little stories into the map. Yep. That's what I love to do. And so when, if you zoom way in on the village, you'll actually see all sorts of little things. There's even a little pig or a little sheep, you know? See, that's that's oh fantastic. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to get yep. close to that. Oh, I see, yeah. Mm -hmm. But something's yep. down here in this. What is that? A cow a, and is a that sheep. A cow or a, yeah. mm -hmm. There's even a cat on that yeah, map. There's a sheep. Oh. And uh, chasing a couple of hens. So, so that means that your, your resolution is like one pixel per like a couple of inch or, or, I think, or i think the resolution on this was 450 or 600 something like uh -huh. that. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So 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 it's roughly a pixel every foot or so. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, uh, that, and it's exciting that it's coming. It'll be out very shortly. Yeah, you know, with uh, all the Troll Lord mm -hmm. Games wonderful things that they're doing. Um, yeah, they've been such a fantastic sponsor here too. Yeah, uh, and they're and also they're sponsoring Grailcon again. Grailcon two mm -hmm. coming up, which yep. is a wonderful thing. It's, uh, um, so, Jay, you can dig into to my map in Dropbox, and I put something that no one else has. Oh, well, it's very new too. Oh, that I is, have, good. yeah, I have it all on my machine now. So yeah, uh, so going to Anna Maps, and there Anna is a, a hex three D down. Um, this is under sample folder, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, in, not in the sample folder. In the, straight in my map folder. So, so okay, yeah. so it's in old maps. Uh, well, no, you, outside of it. Oh, you didn't put it in either one of the two. Uh, all right. Oh, oh hang on what? a second. I put it in the sample folder. So, so there you go. And it's called 3D. Uh, yeah, hex. but I have them already. I have them already downloaded to my machine. Ah, oh, got you. That, that, that is too late. Put, I put, put them. In. Put it in. Uh, put it in uh, Discord. Yep. I put yep. it in Discord put it in if it fits, Discord. Yep. and I will mm -hmm. get it. Oh yeah, it's small. It, this one right. is very small. I yep. will get that. See, this is all... we're learning a little bit as we go here too. Yep. So <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. Yep. <laughs> with with all with all this, but that's okay. I got it. Yep. Here. Uh, so you can. Yeah, you can. Oh oh wow. Oh wow. So so that is a yeah because and this is kind of just to show that there are different ways of doing things too. And this is a quick and dirty One promo second. image for a Kickstarter that launched yesterday by Griffin Ooh, or Games. Super oh. fresh. Yeah, so it's very, very fresh. And okay. and it's it's a, a quick it and dirty job. So it's not any anywhere near. And this is something we should dissect in a future show exactly how this is made, so to speak. Or, or not exactly, but in principle how it's made. Say Boom. quick and dirty. Oh, oh look yeah. at this. Come there on. So this is a quick and dirty this is a part of go. a map for a, a project that is going to be set in arcadia meaning it's an other plane so it's an earth ocean around it that is semi-transparent kind of bluish and and then it's a mountain and the idea is to have a hex crawl but instead of having boring top-down maps you can actually will actually see what the terrain looks like for each hex 
So this is uh, some miles across, like seven miles or something like that, or 10 maybe across. And there's like a major mountain ridge and, and, and then there's rivers and stuff. And this is just a, a concept, a quick concept that I put together in a couple of days and, and, and just did a couple of these as an example, so to speak. So um, you're using some new, new uh, technology with this one or is this one? Well, it's the same yeah. as I'm using for, I've used for, well, it's the same technique I've used for my shield lands maps and stuff. Okay. And the, and right. the same technique that Lindor Isles and, and stuff will be getting this treatment down the line, so to speak. So, yep. So that's what I'm working working in. But this is low resolution compared to Shield Lance. This is right. one pixel per 100 yards or something like it's that. It's got to so. be low resolution because I was able to pull it over Discord. There's Shield oh, exactly. Lance. <laughs> otherwise, it would be, yeah, be 40,000 pixels, <laughs> which is interesting. A map that covers the same area in Shield Lance is 30 thousand pixels that's, that's the, the resolution difference so so yeah so, so 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 that is yeah so that will come in top down view and 3d view so you can actually see what the terrain look like when you go exploration so to speak so that's another and and here we have another beautiful map yeah i just popped I, I was using yeah. this one as a background a placeholder mm -hmm. or some of uh, yeah. this is uh uh um examples um i love the city, the city map, uh, you know, which uh, we seem to be lacking a lot of in Greyhawk. And this, yeah. one's, this one's a nice, uh, and also, which was the other one? Uh, this one here, this one here is really cool looking too, Alyssa. Both those. Yeah, and, There's and, a certain and, amount of irony there too, because I drew that one probably back in the 90s. Really? Yeah. That's one of my older pieces. Uh, okay. Uh, it's 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 cool looking, really cool. The uh, question, Zytek asks, is the height to scale on yours? Anna? Yeah, I, I answered yes. Okay. Yeah, that the sorry. height I... is to scale. Yeah, it is to scale. And since it's outer planet, we kind of push the boundaries a bit, so the things could be really tall and 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 kind of we went overboard a little bit, so to speak. But oh, so cool. part of that Kickstarter will be a exploration uh, over over a bunch of hexes with really detailed visualized hexes so yeah this is in the 90s that's amazing. you see that, that amazing. you're going to see jay has some old crappy maps that i did back in the <laughs> 90s and, maps. and and we have to uh, really and, and i wanted to to show everybody that anyone can do what we do you just have to be tenacious stubborn keep at it for years and eventually and have a vision and that and willing what to I learn do. Not what Anna does. Anna, you're going to need a couple of thousand dollars worth of rig and a well, whole okay, lot of yeah, learning that, that's time. True. Yeah, okay, that's With true. Yeah. Which means you just need a biro and a pen and just yeah, patience, yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why don't we show some of this original old work that we ha you have, and yeah. and mm -hmm. we'll back, we'll bounce back and forth. I have the the folder oh, yeah. open. Mm -hmm. uh, Alyssa, if you want to uh, tell me which one you want to go with, that, with that. oh, you know what. Pick any of them. How does um, how does any of them. Uh, over Overland nineteen ninety six sound? How's this? Uh, sure. Oh yeah, Ooh. that's delightfully old. And this is not my oldest piece actually, uh, okay. because I actually um, yeah. How do I even start with this one? So we're going to see some of my of mine that are even older than this, but. You know, so back in the day, and I'm going to age myself, I was role-playing in the 80s, probably around 83, 84, I started playing Dungeons & Dragons. And I, yeah, there are scenarios out, but not many scenarios that you can buy in town. So I'm writing my own scenarios now. I'm writing my own world now. There was a lot of that going on. And so I, that's when I started mapping better way. That's when I started drawing, because I had to. I've got to draw my own stuff now. And so we're going to see some of my earlier work uh, because, I mean, I'm using, yeah, I'm, fine, I'm using very fine pens, but then how do I color them? Well, this one had pencils, which is okay. good. That's a step up. So you actually drew the whole blue ocean with or water with pencils? They, like... they look like felt tip. The water looks like felt tip to okay. me. Okay, yep. I was a fan of felt tip, and I can't tell you why other than i had them i don't know and um, well, that's what you do you take what you have yeah mm -hmm. but but this particular map um if you look at it it's i got inspiration actually from modern cartography maps i was uh, just like going we, to say i get some ordnance uh, you can see the contour lines yep. mm -hmm. yeah yeah i was looking and in my earlier days 
that was my style. That's yep. yeah, that, that's a beautiful shot for it, actually. Mm -hmm. You can see that 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 was my uh, like. How do I draw a hill? How do I draw a mountain? Yep. Look at a real world map and go. Mm -hmm. oh, I guess it, that's exactly. what I'm doing. Yep. And so that was my inspiration. I did look at real maps though too. I studied mm -hmm. real maps for coastlines and such, and islands and things. And I feel I like got an interesting look. This was yeah. actually a previous. Okay, so. True story, true story, true story on this one. Do you remember the game um, God, with the moon gates and such? And they Ultima. Ultima. Yeah, oh, oh, Ultimate okay. Eight, oh, yeah. Black Eight. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember they had, uh, the whole thing was based in Britannia? Mm -hmm. Lord uh, British. I drew on my original world map, Britannia. Oh. And... Everyone in my group complained because it's a stupid name when you come from Britain, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so in a later iteration, which is what we're looking at here, I smashed Britannia into smaller islands. I had a cataclysmic event occur, which is why it's so fragmented. Um, so this was all done in just ink on paper, um, very just fine lines, uh, contours for the hills, etc., uh, you can see the grid. The grid is because I would zoom in on an area and draw it even finer, like a old school Google Maps or something. Mm -hmm. And then I would have a grid on that and zoom in again. Um, and those that grid conforms to my world map then. Um, so yeah, yeah. That, was, that, that was probably early 90s, that particular yeah. map. Yeah, And uh, to me, it wow. shows, uh, I, I, I really like, like the map. It's, it's really cool. And it shows to me that in the beginning, we are all looking at real world maps because we don't have any other references, meaning we haven't started to explore what fantasy mapping really can be because there's different needs for fantasy maps than real world maps and and that's something we need to talk about in the in depth further on so to speak so should we look at my horrors now yeah to, sure i'll yeah. bounce back and forth we'll go, go back, back and to, forth yeah, yeah go we back got a to bunch high we... yeah go to high port oh port yes map. oh my yes. gosh <laughs> this is this is my style from this, this like is me. probably <laughs> 92 93 or or 90 yeah early 90s and and this is I sketched them basically before every game session. I did an area and I had this photocopied hex paper and and then just drew. And and it's also it's all hand pens. I had a pencil case. I still think I have it somewhere. A set of of pencils that are like in eighteen colors or something thick ones. And 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 I just used them. And and those pencils have been with me since early nineties. And and I just drew and it's contour lines and different colors for like forest and meadows or whatever it was. And and then rocks going in. So it was very simple and 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 just functional. I had no idea of style or anything like that. It was just functional. It was just something to assist me in my DMing. That was it, so to speak. Do you I didn't know what I find other... interesting here, though, yeah? is that there's, a, there's this actually early elements of the way you're thinking in the mm -hmm. modern day. Yeah? Like you have truly transitioned the same thought process with technology and such, and obviously more talent, into basically a higher version of this. I yeah. can see this. If you said, if honestly someone put this in front of me and said, yeah, Anamaya did this like 30 years ago, I would go, yeah, I can actually believe that. It's, it's, there's a thought process yeah. here. Yeah. I never did anything like this because I didn't think like this. Uh, yeah, for me, this was, thank you. And, and this is like, a quick and dirty process. I didn't spend hours and hours on this. I was like, okay, where is we going next? And then I sketched out and I read the, the area and I sketched out and tried to make a believable landscape. And you have to realize I'm coming from, and most of the viewers already know this, but I've been a heavy user of, of user of real mapping in the real world. I've been a pilot. I've, I've been a soldier. I've, I'm an avid hiker. I've been out on, on seas and, and sailed a bit, can kayak and stuff and used maps so I'm, I'm so i know a hell of a lot about real world navigation and how to use maps so 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 maps is not a new concept for me and that's why i love to that was 
why I felt that mapping was my thing in role-playing games, because there are so many other people that are much better at game design or rules or monsters and stuff than I am. But mapping was my kind of thing. And then I realized that real world mapping and fantasy mapping are two very different beasts. And this is my first kind of, before I even thought about it, it just started to draw maps that were a bit like you did, Alyssa. We, we only had the examples and, and in my back head, I had like, oh, the real world map, I need to find out the way real around. world. I'm yeah. looking at I'm looking at maps for yeah. my examples. You're looking at the freaking real world from a plane. This 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 show is going to be so much fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Because you you and I we both draw maps, the mm -hmm. joy, but yeah. we both have a very different approach. Even yeah. if our scale is similar. Yeah, the way exactly. we approach things. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a perfect example of what Lord Kasumbu has got all yeah, on this the looks very interesting. Yeah, You would approach this from a completely different angle, a uh -huh. beautiful angle, but just differently. Our brains mm -hmm. think like, yeah. uh, uh, like uh, just differently. We're looking for different things. Yeah. Um, this, this was the Dwarven Shires. And I probably did this again, early 90s, maybe mid 90s. And I think my approach, now just looking at how you think about maps, Anna, uh, the way I think about maps is, let's just get more detail in there mm -hmm. or something, you know? Yeah. Um, and I wanted to, but this this also is an interesting one because I, I this is maybe my first where I started to deviate away from strict contour lines. Mm -hmm. I've still got contours in here, but I've started to introduce a, a more of a solid line that I eventually break away from. Um, but I've got maybe my little rivers and lakes and stuff. I still do that today. I, th that's my style today. And this is maybe, and like my trees are right there. This is maybe the first map I ever did that actually started to capture some of the real world or the, the things I do nowadays on it. This was again, ink on paper. I noticed that I didn't color this one because I realized my coloring sucked. So stop <laughs> coloring things, baby. Okay, so so you you started with colors and then you moved over to black and white and 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 kind of outlined maps rather than colored for yeah. a while. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, yeah. But I, I was searching for something and I didn't have the tools for it. I'm yeah. not sure I colored a map until I went digital. Okay. Yeah. I, I did one. I did one mm -hmm. city map, um, yeah. which I did not share yet. Okay. Um, and I did that one completely in pencil, colored pencil. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's uh, go over to uh, Jay. If you find yeah. there is one map in in it. my um, uh, let's see yeah, old for... maps, okay. we have Greyhawk City, page zero one. Go to that one. That's my no. That's a, that's another. That's the digital version. Oh, I see. It. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Here no problem. Yep. There we go. Yeah, that's Whoa. my, it's zooming a bit. That's my, X. when I did my, my Greyhawk, when I read the Gord books first time and, and, and then I did this map and that was my sketching out the city, so to speak, for, for, for the, the, um, my concept of the city. Jason Savona is going to love this because it's, a, it's the actual, uh, you yeah. know, one mm -hmm. right from the Gord books. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was the, the idea. So I took the, the, and, and I kind of elaborated a little bit on it and put some few de I detailed the, the, uh, the, uh, castle in the middle. And, and and a little bit I added to it here and there and so on and and filled it out so this was my overview adventuring map and 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 I never got to, to do the surroundings really because the people just went in and out of the city and I realized that I didn't, don't need to do outside the walls because we were always inside when we were in the city so to speak and then it's also page city four that there, there's one city block that I did for, for and I've, I've actually done that most one? of this yeah mm -hmm. one quarter yeah so oh, cool. so I did so zoom in on that one. That's my my very and there yeah, might be the some Swedish too. yeah streets and stuff. So that's my just penciled in and meaning maps were just functional for me back then. It was just getting the information in order to run my games. That was it, so to speak, and and fill in the details and and just do it. So I didn't have that many that much when it came to styling. Was something I had to learn the hard way. To, to to get it to look good, so to speak. It was pure function to begin with. Function and efficiency. I mean, I needed to crank out this uh, whatever we, wherever we want. I wanted the details. So when we came back to it, it looked the same way the next time. And I also used a, a, a 
dry erase markers on the big table. So I drew a copy of this on dry erase markers. And then I used the camera and take a picture afterwards as a reference, so to speak. And, and that way I could improvise on the fly and do, so I often, when I described something during the adventures, I drew it by hand using dry erase markers. And, and in, the, in the beginning, we had a big paper and I used Sharpies. And then we moved to dry erase markers because that was much easier because you can adjust things as you come and you can draw a wall and then you can add a secret door afterwards and stuff. So that was map making during the adventuring, so to speak. And I took picture of it and we used tokens or miniatures or whatever, dice or something to, to represent the, the, the creatures, the monsters that we, so that let's, was there. Let's say one thing about all the maps we've shown so far. There's nothing wrong with them for using them in game for anyone who's making exactly. them in the audience. You know what I mean? Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, yep. whatever works for you is great too, that's you know? The, so. Yeah, and I think that's that's the, the first stage that I want to emphasize for everybody who wants to get in. You, what I, what I should urge you to, to be accomplished is to make maps that are useful yes. for you in your games. You should be able to produce something that you find really useful for your games. I hope that everybody who watched this show over some the coming months will reach that level where they can feel they can make maps that are really useful for themselves and illustrate their own games and reference them, so to speak. And you said one really uh, resonant thing with me there, Anna. So you said functional. Yes. Because as you were talking, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And you said, uh, I didn't bother drawing the outside because no one's no one cares about that. The inside. Yeah, exactly. It was not needed. So I mapped what was actually needed for each right. session. So and that, that's a perfect strategy for a map. If, yeah. if anything, it's the purpose of a map, right? Maps are meant to be functional. So when you were describing now, it's like, okay, that's, that's very functional. Then you actually mm -hmm. said functional. And yeah. you know, the difference between, I think, you and I in a delightful way is I drew my maps almost not for my players. I drew my maps almost for wow factor. Yeah, and like but damn, I've got function. to that point. I now I do that. Yeah, now I world <laughs> build way more than I run games. So so, so I've gone full care circle if you're on that. Going in this city or exactly. Not. Now I map <laughs> every. It. I map every square feet of of a thousand square miles for my Sheetlands campaigns, and I know the players will never visit ninety percent of that map, but I still want to do it because it's so cool. Because I can. Yeah, there's oh, elevations. This looks fantastic. There's elevations all over this one. Exactly. Tell us about this, Elisa. Yeah. This looks this, fantastic. This is so early on for me. Uh, this is the 80s. Oh, and wow. It, I, I want to say it's not my first, but it's close to it. And how, how can you tell it's not my first? Can you see the join where I've done a photocopy? Right there. Right laid here. it on top of the paper right and there. then worn on. Yeah. Right. So clearly, the interior was my original, and then mm -hmm. I've needed to draw alongside it. Yeah. Wow. It's not digital back then. No, right? but this is fantasy ordnance survey map. Right. A brilliant. So I, I, that would be I, like I have the got great a goblin kingdom. to copy a map, and then I've started yeah. to go off. No, but map. Th this yeah. will be like the great kingdom will send out their best cartographers to 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 <laughs> to survey the land. They will make something like this. It oh, it looks fantastic to me. Yeah. Yeah. It, so 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 this one, uh, yeah, definitely not my first map I ever drew. Um, I think we might see the first one I ever ever drew here shortly. Um, but again, studying real world um, coastlines, um, I'd like to think I have a good grasp of an interesting and believable coastline right there. My mountains and hills, less so. Uh, my early style was very, yeah. you know, it looks heavy on the contour. Blobby. Yeah, it looks a bit blobby. blobby. But blobby that, is a that, good phrase. Yeah, but that happens. Contour lines, and we need to talk about contour lines and, and why to use them and why not to use them, etc. Because that's one of the things. They, they have a tendency of being blobby. That's in their nature, so to speak. So, Do you so know the, Do you know the, yeah. the glory of this one? No, I mean, first, mm, it's a little creme de la creme. Look at the amount of felt tip on this bad boy yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna retire right now no one's yeah. gonna put that man a felt tip on <laughs> no, a piece no, no, of paper exactly you, you already yeah you you already and overdone it. i yeah. actually i think here i for some reason i had this phase in my life when i drew on yellow paper not mm -hmm. white yellow and this is actually yellow paper that i, I was drawing on right here and it i don't know it creates interesting colors yeah I, it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and 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 you get that kind of old vibe when I see the color scheme looks like it's three hundred years. It looks fantasy. It looks the like the longer version of me is saying yeah. thank you, Anna. I really appreciate that. Nobody the did, me. Did. The me version is going. This is horrible. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> oh yes, but but it's 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 but to and that's the other thing. It's colorful meaning. Yeah, but you have to realize that the functionality of a yeah, map and the beauty of the right, map right. are two different things. Yeah. And Can some I give maps a shout are... out, though? Can I give yeah, a sure, shout out? Sure, sure, please. To, Absolutely. To the Letra Set Robon. Oh, begin. yes. Ah, uh, that's where you got there. I thought you were killing your for extraordinary Look at that morass. Well. Look close yeah. in on that morass. That's <laughs> that old, remember the, the, the big mm -hmm. parchment style? Uh -huh. And yep. you'd rub the letters on. Yep. Mm -hmm. My brain is saying letter set, but it's not letter set. It's something else. Yeah, it's that's it's the rub on letters right there. Oh wow, yeah. pretty neat. The problem was that you had to be sure because when you put them on, that was it, so to speak. You could, oh no, yeah. you're done. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Alyssa, what is the oldest one I have in here in the folder? Is it? Uh, do you know which one it is? I have City Twelve A, Twelve B. Yeah, Uma. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I should have probably given you dates and proper names, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm too good for this. Scroll Are you one, two, me three. Right now? Uh, um, all right, let me Goblin's let me tell you Teeth exactly. Ridge, Racina, Amber, Topek One, all right, Olaginous Western, yeah, old map. Okay, so out of the old maps, well, we've got a few of those on yellow. Um, thanks, Zom. Huma, Huma, Huma. Huma, I think is the first map I ever did. There we go. Okay. That looks fantastic. Yeah. I think that's the first map I <clears throat> ever drew. Yeah. Right there. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that the blue, well, A, it, the whole thing is almost done completely in felt tip, except I, I, for some reason I then went into pencils for the mountains. Still very blobby on the mountains. Um, With this one, this is the first map I ever did. The blue is dark. It's very dark. And, of course, like Anna, you said before, once you start, you're locked in, right? Yeah, yeah. So the minute yeah. you go like this with a dark blue felt tip, it's like, yeah. oh, that's oh. what you're doing now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's the Yeah, you can't erase it or anything. You just have to do it. So, yeah. So this is me experimenting with it. Mm -hmm. Um Again, I loved the, I loved my, the coastlines that I was able to do back then. It was a I, very uh, – yeah. the, 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 the yeah. Copic, Copic – Coke mm -hmm. tick pens that you get yeah. nowadays. We had the equivalent in England, very, very, very fine ink pens. Yeah. Um, I did those for everything. I wish I still had black and white versions, but mm -hmm. eh, you got and, a color and now I get so so awesome because now I want to have a whole show talking about our ordnance survey style maps useful in the game and and yeah. how would you use them and go about. I, I want to have a whole just... show. Yeah, I have a whole, have a whole show. Up, which is great. Exactly. Yes, this is awesome. So there's so many things that we need to delve deeper into. Ask because, as as a viewer, as a user or a DM, you want to figure out what kind of maps works for you. What do you like for your style of, of gaming and yeah. your style of what effort you want to do and and so on and so forth. Are you the one that wants to plan for six months working on your masterpiece, or did you like me in the beginning? You just sketch something in in half an hour for each session, so you have it, so to speak. Yeah. Style yeah, so with this map, like, um, yeah, but it's probably quite a bit of hours. The players, yeah. honestly, were in one town for the well, yeah, whole and, campaign. And, and, and did you oh, ever show so you this did to the, the players? entire world and they did one town. Yeah. Yeah, one time. And and also this was for like your reference, years. right? Yeah, that's but, awesome. But you, you did... Zoom in, zoom in to the to the left there a little bit where you got the little hooky peninsula thing. Um, and I think yeah. you might see just some of these names, by the way. Yeah. There's no internet back then. So for name <laughs> inspiration. I yeah, used to yeah you were limited. A, uh, no well, name I used to pull out old books and just yeah. look at mm -hmm. random, like, yep. name, like random words and stuff. And I had yep. a, I had a whole a old atlas that I would pull out, mm -hmm. and I would pull in like names from America or Africa, yeah, places that seemed did. distant. A Rand McNally atlas of, of something was right. perfect inspiration. So yeah, yep. on this map, there's a heart guard. Um, there's also a lot of inspiration from Pick Your Own Adventure Path. So mm -hmm. Tolka Day was from an old adventure path. I, I stole that completely. Yep. But look near the top of there, it says Oakland. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. 
you you can you know what map i was looking at when i picked up that name yeah, yeah. i was like yeah, but it's, oakland yeah. sounds mm -hmm. sexy let's yeah. name it that yep yeah, it's oh, Alyssa. It can't be as bad as we have Applebee's in in in. Oh Hall yeah, and macaroon and okay, stuff. So, so, yeah, so, there's so, 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 so some bad that ones. So and, and that, that, that is even. I even took out the worst ones from Living Greyhawk yeah. that that I didn't even put on the map. Oh, man. And oh yeah, <laughs> that, that, when I saw too many Berlin subway stations yeah. in 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 Pearland, it was like no 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 no. I don't want U-Bahn something that was like no way that's not coming on the map. So yeah. We have a great question from Statler. Okay. Did you are, are there maps that you threw out or that you lost and that you wish you had at this point? Either I haven't either. lost anything, I think, but there are things that I wish I'd lost in a way because it's so <laughs> bad now looking at it. So so and and to be honest, there was a bunch of them I wanted to show on the show, but I didn't show in here but i didn't because the names were so bad because there was there was just like Elisa said you have to realize when i started playing in in greyhawk all i had was the greyhawk fox set i didn't have anything more and when they went off script so to speak i had to come up with places and and i lived in western sweden and and the library was kind of limited it was a town of five thousand people and and i was 15 years old and and was 17 i think and and so that was kind of yeah it was the names were bad so so the, the and and the styling was the same as you've seen here but i did 200 of them covering large part of the, and they are so bad when it comes to names. A few of them I'm going to reintroduce because I scanned them all now. I haven't looked at them for 30 years almost. So so I'm going to reintroduce a few good ones on 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 the map in the future. So yeah. So it's I've got it's, two stories then on this. One, a, a lost map. I, I do have a lost map. Uh -huh. And one, um, naming. So I'm naming ink on paper, right? I'm Plus, I'm looking at a book for inspiration. Yeah. And, and oh, I'm looking around my bedroom, I swear. And there was one time, and I'd done this city map, and it was pretty kick ass. I was really happy with it, a lot of labor. And I'm like looking around my bedroom, and I'm like, what am I going to name this area? <laughs> candle. Candle. <laughs> and I wrote the word candle on this field. I'm like, candle? That, that's freaking stupid. What am I doing? <laughs> Candle what? Um, so it ended up being Candle Fields of Bavari. And from that, I'm like, See? is it really stupid? What yeah. am I going to do with this? But I came up with the Will of the Wisps come here every 100 years. And yeah. they congregate for some See? unknown reason. Awesome. And I got yeah. this whole story idea from this yeah. terrible name. Yeah, but now we know how it probably how or possibly how Ed Greenwood came candle up with keep. the candle keep. Exactly. <laughs> Might have been yeah, right, looking same, around going, same candle, type of thinking. Candle yeah. keep. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. a map I seriously lost. So um actually Lord Gazomba, can you bring up the work in progress that you sure. the age of antiquity? Yeah, I mean? sure, absolutely. So the Age of Antiquity is my um, current project. I'm about to finish the ink work on it this coming weekend. If you zoom in a little bit on that, it's a monstrous map. There's a uh, huge say, amount geez. of lines on it. So right? you draw all the lines and then you color it afterwards. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh that's a wonderful process. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be uh, once every two years or so, someone asks me to do a mega map. And this yeah. is this year's mega map. Um, yeah. And so... I did a map like this, but bigger, when I was still in the late 80s. And I was at college, and my dad had some old rolled-up newspaper. Uh, not newspaper, a uh, wallpaper mm -hmm. uh, that he gave me. So you could roll it out like a scroll. And I filled, I swear, five feet <laughs> with a map like this. Yep. And I did it when oh I was at gosh. college. Mm -hmm. and i don't know what happened to it <gasps> oh sad yeah the That's whole thing i filled it a mega city it was the size of four cities uh, in fact it was it was it was heart guard it was the city of heart guard mm -hmm. and it had four districts with the interior districts of five in all and i drew the whole thing i have no idea where that thing went that's a shame so if there is there a map that i wish i still had that one i <clears throat> And and Statler ninety seven have a wonderful uh, map and in, and inspiration from old maps you can find in the National Geographic. Yes, especially when it comes to how to present maps. And I was going to to have that as a as a 
example, if, if we talk about <clears throat> how to present maps, the National Geographics have done wonders for map presentation. And, and they are, I, I would say, top of the field on, on presenting maps, isometric, top down, and do cool stuff. Oh, well, yeah, perfect. Here. That's a good, that's, that's one of my very first digital maps because I, because in, in my work in the military, I saw <clears throat> cool rendered digital maps in the 80s. And I was like, I need this for my games. So in the early 90s, when Photoshop came out and I used Coral Draw and Coral Photo Paint and stuff, and you, you got Bryce, that was one of the earliest terrain creating tools. And I was like, yeah, I need that. I went and, and bought a, a computer for $5,000 just to run the damn thing. And, and, and I've kept to it. And this is one of my first examples. This is a little village. I forgot where it was placed eventually, but it was one of the, the had the oldest time stamp, so to speak. And, and so that was one of the first one. And, and you, you can even see some little hills and I painted in some trees and, and, and a road. I'm assuming and, this and, is a keep right here. Well, yeah, keep or little house for near right. the river there or something okay. like that. Yeah, so so I think I, yeah, <laughs> something like that. So it's it's kind of yeah, it's it's the the story has gotten lost so to speak in 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 the, but it's one of my very oldest maps that that and you can see the roads have different width depending on if it's a road or if it's just a little trail and, and things cool. like that. So yeah, so so very very basic, but it it can serve the purpose. So so you don't always have to make the perfect now. I'm I'm becoming a slave to perfectionism, but I'm trying to get around it, and we'll talk about that in a future show too. When um, we go, to, Alyssa, and me can present what you do for your games, meaning prep for a game session, map wise. I think will be something that we need to to start talking. Stuff One to. question yeah. that came up twice before we want yeah. to go on to actually what it, what you define as a map. Uh, uh, do you prefer 2D or 3D? And I'm assuming you. It depends on the purpose. Both okay. Yeah, it depends on the purpose. Meaning, most of VTTs, for instance, today they are two D. Two D. Yeah. And 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 also, when you do really long distance overland travel, two D is to prefer because you can measure things. You can measure distance and stuff much better on a two D map. <clears throat> so try to do long journey overland journeys on a three D map, and you can ask any pilot, soldier, hike, or whatever. No, don't do it. You want an over a top down view so you okay. can calculate things like that. But a 3D view is much better to get a, a hold of what the landscape looks like. So you can plan an ambush, you can kind of tell the players this is what the landscape looks like. This is what you see. What do you do? Kind of thing. Right. But that inspirational needs 3D tops 2D and, and by Here we go with recent 3Ds yeah. for Alyssa exactly. right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so Alyssa, do you have a preference? I'm assuming you prefer 2D for the most part, because you said I, I do for all of the reasons that Anna just said. Okay. Um, I, I find that I want to say that 3D maps almost go into an illustrative yep. area, mm -hmm. right. uh, yep. and there's a good reason to have that. Um, but I think if you if you are if you're trying to do an informative map in an illustrative manner, and you go too far to one side. It ends up being visually gorgeous, but communicates very poorly. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, I, I think the block here works fine. And I think the, the Martin Bailey here work fine because they're very simple. So they're not really trying to communicate too much by way of layouts and distance and things like that. But if that's what I'm trying to do, then I'm going to go top down. I'm going to go 2D for that yeah. because mm -hmm. it's much easier to understand distance, placement, size, yeah. layout, mm -hmm. rotation. It, we've all seen it. We've seen 3D dungeon maps. And 3D dungeon maps, just, they're the bomb, right? Like Raven I mean, Loft, we all love them. Raven Loft, mm -hmm. it was the first yeah. one we, we, yeah. we adore them. Like, people will fall out their seats, upvote something because it's a 3D map and it looks good. But when you're trying to use it as a GM, yeah. it's like, well, um, I... I think this goes yeah. around the back so and true. they start to become a little harder to interpret. So mm -hmm. my business tends to be one of making it easy for a GM of in, in any game system, understand where something is at in relationship to something else. And for that top down is the way I prefer to go. Yeah. Three quickie questions before we yeah. uh, move on to topic here. Provi do you, 
when you play, do you provide ma cruder maps to your players so there's less detail on it? Do you how much pre-planning do you do for fantasy map creation? And have you uh, ever tried supplying your players with old-fashioned medieval strip maps? So. Yeah, it, yeah, I can ask. Ask. I think that was a great question, and let, I I want to do a whole bunch of versions if I have the time and the right. possibility to do it. And I want a DM version with everything: bells and whistles. Uh, looks should look gorgeous. Should be a photo reel representation with all the details, all the secrets, all the labels, all the background info, etc. Blah blah blah. Everything, and then you should be a quick DM version with all just basically just the outlines, the basic numbers, the roads, this, this I'm, I'm thinking like a, a, a big overland map, a kingdom, a, a province or something like that. Then you have, first we have one with all the, the yummy details and all the text. And then you have, you take away the satellite image, just have the distance in miles. You just have the, 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 the details and, and no, or, or like the information without any clutter. It looks more like a GPS map in your car or something like very sim simple that way. And then, yeah, that's the, the DM full version, so to speak, for ins inspiration, for session planning and, and campaign planning and all that. And then I want an in-game handout version in case the players go to the big city and ask and pay 100 gold to get like a, a map so they can use in game. So then I want the scribbly bit on a piece of parchment with more or less errors in it. That's one another version. And then I want the VTT encounter map that I can put in Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds or, or All Bear Rodeo or something to put the tokens on. So so I want at least four versions of the map to be fully a fully featured map, so to speak, for, for different purposes in my game. That then I rarely if ever get to do all these four versions, but that will be the kind of the extreme case if if I if I'm fully prepped, I will have all those versions, so to speak. One for game prep, one for, for DM during the game session with just the the, the necessary information and, and one token one map for the players to look at and, and one for the VTT, so to speak, or the or or put printed on the table, or, or something, or or project using a projector on on the screen if you sit around the table. You want to uh, tackle that one, Alyssa? And um, by the way, fam, because you are fam at this point. This guy here, he's Deacon. Oh, um, you'll probably know the name Deacon. Um, he will probably appear on the show. Oh, so we have Deacon on, and Minnie on, on, on the okay, show. So, yeah. I had Leo come in, who's another black cat. Okay, he was yeah. in the and we have Minnie, the Minnie's been open. on the, yeah, Minnie's yes. been to the vet today. So, De Deacon well. loves to sit off my shoulder, just stare awesome. at me like the world <laughs> is ending and yeah. reach out his claws. So Awesome. Um, yeah. But so I probably have two to three maps, maybe, that I do. If I do three, one of them is a battle scale map. Um, I don't have the wonderful terrain that Lord Gass Gassumba has, <laughs> but I, I do draw maps. So sometimes I will draw a big, huge map that the players are going to be on and I hide sections until they reveal it. Um, I will have a GM map with all of the details and the secrets on it. And I, what I'm going to refer to as a prop, because I'm actually heavily into Call of Cthulhu. That's a passion of mine as a GM. And nice. it's all about the props, baby. It's all about the props. And maps are a prop. So yes. doing um, a player handout, something that looks like it was drawn in that era, mm -hmm. something that maybe looks like it's on parchment. In fact, I even think I gave Lord Gasumba a couple of examples with burns edges and coffee stains and stuff that I've done in the past. Old ones, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love doing that type of thing as a player handout. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, there there's an go. example. Mm -hmm. That's a prop. That, that yep. was a player handout. Yep. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then we have scroll two and scroll. So we got three different sections of that castle. Yeah, this was all done back in the uh, early 90s here. Mm -hmm. Remember Curse of the Azure Bonds? And that series of computer we, games. We just had we just had Jeff Grubb on Sunday night, or who wrote Azure Bots, <laughs> and, then, and then the SSI game, right? Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. ironic. <laughs> yes, yeah. what a yeah. wonderful, what a wonderful SSI gold box. I, I think game. the northeast northwest parts of the castle was actually a wizard's castle, and I think it was Azure Bonds. I I converted it straight into a role playing game, and I drew Perfect. my own maps for it, and I aged them and everything, and. Pure English coffee stains right there. <laughs> That's yep. awesome. Uh, oh, and of course, burn stains, because I used to get my mom's cocker and cook things underneath the grill and then <laughs> invariably set things on fire. And this, 
there's pieces of paper flying around the kitchen and my mom would run in and yep. go, what are you doing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now that's a, that's a great, uh, that's a great, uh, example yep. there, uh, just showing that, um, you know, it doesn't have to be that detailed, but it's got a no, nice flair to yep. it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tim, yep. uh, the Ever Mysterious Tim just popped on. He's good for doing this, too. Oh, and, yeah. He's he, done he, fantastic yeah, he does, props and stuff. He does yep. great mm -hmm. prop work, too. Yep. So, I know we, uh, what do you consider a map to be and, and differences between fantasy and real world? You know, that, okay, that, that yeah. seems to be a big, you know, yeah, it where is, does it yeah, cross it, that line? Where does it change over? So, yeah. So, so yeah, is, we, there's a, the ba ba I try to drill down what the very basic definition of a map is. And to me, it's that you have a geospatial representation of some form of data. That's a map. If you have any form of data okay. that could be the, the, the crime rate or, or the economic output of a country or, or the world spread out in colors over the world, or it can be where a dragon lives or, or the density of orcs somewhere or, or whatever. And, and, and in any form of, of data somehow that is somehow kind of rep representation. And I, I, I wanted to use visualization, but I realized not all maps need to be visualized. Some of them might even be tactile, that you need to feel okay. them or stuff like that. So, so that might even okay. be a map. So I want that, that's the very basic idea. But then you have the other continuum, what is a map and what is an illustration? You can gradually go from a map that could be pure technical drawing think about and, and i have some examples we can yeah which one would later. you like to bring up you can bring up uh, one now as I, we're talking I, I, I put them up. in too late so i'm going to put oh, them okay. in to to uh, i'm going to put them in discord for you here so, so okay hopefully yeah. i can pull them out without uh yeah so uh, they're, they're small me... they're tiny okay. they're tiny so so i'll just start with this one now. yeah start okay. with this one and, and okay. that you yeah that one in 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 um, no problem in, 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 in Discord. So, and that's something we're all used to, so to speak. And, I, and people have oh, seen, yeah. I've used, okay. this, used this in, in, in other um, uh, seminars. So some of you might already have seen this, but I think it's a real cool way of looking at it. So, so, so I'm going to put a bunch of them in here. So oh, the first one that cool. Jay can show up here is, is the classic Darlene map of the city of Greyhawk that's era. So Meaning it's classic fantasy map. It can't be any more classic than than the master Darlene doing the the um... yeah I'm gonna go as fast as I can for saving these and then putting oh these yeah up yeah and so... they are they are <laughs> they're only me. a couple of megabytes so yeah I'm yeah. sorry I should have we should have prepped I could yeah. I could share it, but we do that for future yeah shows, so. we're good we don't we're want good. to give me jinx it too much here so yeah once we don't I want got to it starting it. here we're good so yeah uh, I'll get the Darlene one up in a second here in a second yep. in a second we don't want to um... yep. Was, uh, and, uh, that we have a good uh, from uh, the magnificent Pax. Does it matter where you start your map? Yes, I think it does matter okay. because it depends. Depends if it's a planned map that you do a commission and you research it. And not, then I don't think it matter much. But if you do it live while your players are looking and you draw a map on your that that's the second one. So yeah, I know the Darlene one disappeared on me somehow. Uh -oh, so I'm okay, throwing the second I'll, one up because it's up right now. So. Okay, yeah, you, yeah. you put, yeah, yeah I'm going to put, put that the one Darlene. up for now. I'm going to find the Darlene Okay, yeah, <laughs> we, we, we all, yeah, we all see the Darlene one. And and imagine yeah. if yeah. if you if you wanted to, to take your car and you want to go on vacation and Rand McNally would doing the Greyhawk area map of the area of Greyhawk, it will look something like this. And meaning you can present the same type of data in a very different way, so to speak. So this is the Greyhawk city of, of Greyhawk area in Rand McNally style. What you get is you get the roads, you get to know where the forests are basically, and you get to know where the coastlines are. And you get to know that the quality of the roads are very important and the yeah. numbering and stuff like that. Okay. So that's, that's very important. But imagine if you're a pilot and you want to fly over the Greyhawk area and you want to land there and you want to, so from a pilot's perspective, you have the next map that is looked and very I do weird. have it and yes. Yep. And it's testing me. And it's testing oh, yes, my I'm capabilities tonight, which yep, is good. Uh, yep. There we go. Boom. Okay. 
Yeah, and there you have the same area for, for from a pilot's perspective. And all you want to know is where the airfields are and you want to know the airspace, meaning, and, and this is kind of fun. I, I made it fun. It's, you can tell what dragon area you have, like a, a, you have one of these uh, danger areas where dragons roam and, and you have, the, the, there's a bunch of stuff and you can tell who, who regulates the airspace and stuff like that. And the, the, the outline of the country and, and of, of the near div is just, one little line because you just need to know where land is and where water is and it's barely that so to speak and you can Celine is an exclusion zone because they don't want any anyone flying in over with their dragons in over over Celine <laughs> so so maps can look very different you present a slightly different subset of data in a different style and you get a map that for a very different purpose and then I had uh, then the example of my my regular Flannies map that for for DMs to, to prep, so to speak. You yep. want to know what the landscape look like, and you want the the whole shebang. You want basically all the details. So you can sit and pour over it and and plan your 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 escapades in in future. And but, this is what we know as yeah. the the mm -hmm. base Anna map here now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so you so. you can kind of you can you can you can think of it, and and for hikers use a different type of maps that pilots do. You use a different type of map when you in your GPS in your car because you want only the very basic information because you want to look at the road and don't want to look at the map, and you don't want to be inspired. And that's I think is the essence between real world mapping and fantasy mapping. Real world mapping is about reducing detail to get rid of as much clutter as That's possible and to just put the very essence, meaning a hiking okay. map or a GPS map, you want the minimum amount of detail just to get the job done, nothing else. And and then you, a fantasy map is often the opposite. You want to add lots of stuff and you want to inspire as much as inform. You want people to be inspired. You want, as a DM, you want inspiration. As a, as a, someone who's buying a game setting, you want to have something that oohs and awes you a lot, so to speak. But you don't want that out of your GPS map or when you go to a hospital and you want to find your way to that ward, you don't want to be inspired to do it. You just want to get the very basic info of the layout of the hospital. So, so those are, are fantasy maps, I think. That, and then the obvious is that the real world doesn't, it doesn't exist. It doesn't depict the real world, which means it's kind of requires a different way of, of creating the map. But I think that the the, um, the essence is that you add stuff to a fantasy map, but in real world, you kind of remove clutter and and, and what you don't need, so to speak. So, uh, Anna, um, Alyssa, your take on that question, um, and if you want me to bring up any so, questions. I, I, Anna, Anna definitely uses words that are way more scientific than mine. But I think <laughs> I think she and I are about to say the same thing because I want yeah. to say that a map has an audience and it has a purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I'm going to pick on a mall map as an example, M-A-L-L, -L, yeah. mall. Um, yeah. What is the purpose of that map and who is the audience? The audience are people in the mall. Right. Why are they looking at it? What is the purpose of this map? They need to know where they're at because they're mm -hmm. probably lost and they're yeah. trying to find a store. Anything else is superfluous, or the restroom, yeah. exactly, right? Yeah. And, 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 and the way, main ways of getting up and down, right? Mm -hmm. How, how do I get from where Great I'm point. at to where I want to be? Yeah. And there's nothing else. They're not yeah. drawing little plants and waterfalls mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. carts. And mm -hmm. No, that's not what this is about. And that's what Anna's talking about here. It's like, who is our audience? When she says, uh, and this is an audience, uh, the, the audience is for pilots, that's yep. very, very, very different. Mm -hmm. So I just sent you, um, just to be an arsehole to you, Lord Gasson, <laughs> I just sent you a Roman map, <laughs> okay. and then we'll take yeah. a look at the topography right. stuff. Yeah. yeah, but while and, you're looking for that, I want to, because I, I, I totally I, agree with you, and there's one, and you have, but there, there are examples of map that, are based on inspiration in the real world too, oh. especially when you go to like a zoo or a theme park. Because oh, hundred percent, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I was looking yeah, because, at some tourist maps of London the other day. Exactly, they want to to have you in the zoo or the theme park or, or something similar as long as possible. They don't want to, and they want to obscure things like there is a mile walk across that hill to go to the elephants or, or the lions or something, that. and 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 so they they kind of. What, what they do is that they, they obscure boring stuff like that and show cute elephants and lions and, and stuff like that. So they want to, to, to def take away 
silly stuff like that, how far you have to walk to in order to get you to all the ice, yummy ice cream and the cute lions and, and, and all that, so to speak. So, well, and so then they draw yeah. those attractions in mm -hmm. 3D too, right? Exactly. They've yes. got so the little lion den and the mm -hmm. elephants and yep. the ice cream yep. stall. Yep. And mm -hmm. that's, I mean, who is our audience? What do we want them to know? Yeah. And that's it's the trick. Here. Don't worry yeah, about the distance. Exactly. And those tricks are things that that publishers ask us to do in fantasy mapping all the time. And and it's also something you should start thinking about. What kind of style and tricks do you want to use for your players or for your own inspiration and stuff in order to to memorize things like landmarks, points of interest. What do that? wizard tower look like and stuff like that you can draw that isometric and that's on tourist maps they often had point of interest as little illustrations on the map was very very popular back in the day yeah, that roman so, map is not letting me pop it up on my screen i don't know what if it's uh, yeah. okay uh, yeah it's weird so, uh, yeah. we don't need to worry about that too much i mean yeah. the, the purpose of that particular roman map is um yeah. the audience was obviously travelers across yeah, the sorry, roman empire that. Okay. And if you actually look at it, it's like everything's been flattened. It's all about the roads. Yeah. And it because uh, the roads aren't even going in um, like north, south, east, west directions. They don't even match necessarily the directions that they went in real life because that's not what it's about. It's about yeah. get on this road mm -hmm. and follow it and you will end up over here in this other settlement. Then from yeah. that other settlement, you have three of the roads Pick one of them and you'll go here or here or here. And the whole thing is it's way more like, honestly, the, like the London Underground map or the New York Underground map. Yep. It's like it's not following necessarily the actual route where the rail's at. It's like just get on the blue line. Mm -hmm. You'll get through this stop and this stop. And that's what I love about that. The, yep. It's really it's understanding who our audience is and what we're trying to communicate to mm -hmm. them. Yeah, and then Enough. when it comes to fantasy maps, I think that's where the rules start to deviate mm -hmm. because part of a fantasy yep. map becomes our audience are players, and we want them to love this map, mm -hmm. and that's yep. obviously getting into something a little bit yeah. different. And I think Gribbly has a perfect point when he says fantasy maps also have to serve the function of showing reality, which real maps don't have to, and and uh, that's that's the key point. Meaning in in fantasy mapping, you have to show and present something that is not there. But a real map is usually how to find your way through reality. A fantasy map is to explain and show what reality looks like. That's why I love to have a lot of photoreal stuff in my maps because I need to show that to my players and I need to convince myself what the place looks like so I can kind of fill the details. Let's do a test. Mm -hmm. Let's see if, if Alyssa can share that if I go to that other screen. That oh, yes. Holy yeah. smoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to do a right? test here. That's a great test. Yep. Boom. All right. uh, well, let's... I am going to do this. Do <laughs> yep, there's going to be a test here. Yep, there comes gonna be a, a test. test. Oh, actually... Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Sucky, man. Oh, oh, that's he's awesome. trying to catch me out. I've only yeah, tricks awesome. set up, everyone. Meaning you found that Roman map somewhere, and now you can't find there it. There we go. Oh, oh, look, it did work. Okay. Oh, it's, it's yeah. Did super... I just do a thing? Yeah, oh, there we yes, go. you did a thing. Perfect. <laughs> right, that works. Yep. You did a thing. Uh, yep. So yes. this is what I'm talking about. And, you know, yep. uh, you, 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 I mean, you can see that the roads, it, they're, they're really just going left to right for the most part. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, some of them are doing a diagonal, but... Yeah. This this is a genuine Roman map of the period, mm -hmm. and this is all about if you are at Praetorium, you have two roads. If you leave this road, you're going to end up over here, and if you yeah. leave the other road, you're going to end up over there. And that's yeah. that's what it's all about. It's like be it's on this road. It's the Rand McNally Roman version, so to speak. So yeah, yeah. It's like you will end up at this other settlement over here. And I, I yeah. honestly, when I first saw this, I was like, ah. This is oversimplified. But if you actually look at it, it's like, no, this actually makes sense. Oh, yeah. It, it's it's fantastic. And it's yeah. also some sort of pseudo-isometric view in a way. It, it Kind of. No, totally. Totally. Yeah. And, and what I love about this is, yes, of course, they're showing the, 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 the coastline here. But it's not about the coastline. Because our travelers here are not on boats or ships. They're exactly. on the road. They're yep. following the road. Mm -hmm. There's there's no mountains here. I think there might be one mountain. Uh, 
Oh there's yeah, no, but yeah. Th there's no there's no forestry. You have a set of hills that go straight across. I, I bet that I'm I'm not sure that is hills, but it kind of looks it like it. It kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. But this is all about just if you're trying to get from A to B, mm -hmm. get on this road. Yep. That's all you have to worry and, about. And they they probably had they had road markers, milestones and stuff back then too. So you could probably oh yeah, you can read the name of the road and then you can actually see that on on one of the milestones. So yeah, it's very cool. All right. Well, I am excited that that actually worked. So yes. I go back to this one, awesome. and yep. I'll go to this Fantastic. one where we're so, sharing. Yep. Now here, we can so. The audience only knew the pain that we went through. So <laughs> I that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh man, I'm excited that that, that works well. Mm -hmm. So, um, types. Uh, you know, I went over a couple there, and mm -hmm. uh, yep. do you each have like a type that you love to do? Besides, you know, is it maybe city over land or, you know, you like to do dungeons at once, you know, what what kind of types? For of, me, uh, it's the big, big, big the picture, monster. meaning the, yeah. the, the large area maps, so to speak, kingdoms, whole parts of the world, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, that's what I love to do. Yeah. Okay. To present the landscape, like setting maps have been my Well, speciality. and we know but, that for, you know, we, we absolutely yeah. all know that as... Uh, and uh, yep. everyone knows. I'm, yeah, I'm starting to do village maps and stuff and love to to dig into village and Oi, city maps. No. I'm getting there. I'm getting no. dangerous in 10 years or so. I'm, I'm, get, I'm, get out of my turf. I was going to say, 10 years I will be, or in five years I will be where you are now. So, yeah, so don't worry about it. You'll be way ahead of me. Yep. Yeah, so as we have an atlas map here, and we know that we uh, Anna has that huge atlas uh area yep. and and everyone knows how spoiled i am by anna that i can get custom edits to this map for my campaign well you let me run have <laughs> like this so so you pay for it so yep. yeah and you also one of my patrons that's one of the key because i do that or add about half a dozen patrons now have that service so yeah and it it, it makes a whole bit of difference so when i when i load up a game and then i have an entry screen I have the map of the area where they're playing and Greyhawk blown up, you know, snipped and then blown up with all my yeah. custom edits on it. And it makes mm -hmm. a whole bit of difference in the game. Yeah. It gives that, that depth. It gives it that flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, but wow. Anyone can you know? actually do this because right. the source file for this map, the illustrator file I'm using is actually on my website. Anyone can download it from my Dropbox and, and, and fire up illustrator games. and yeah. do it themselves, so to speak. So yeah. and all the styles and stuff are in there. Which uh, your go-to city, Alyssa, or, or, or do you have? Uh... Actually, so, you know, the question was favorite style, right? Yeah. yeah. And ninety percent of the time, I'm asked to draw city maps, and I do genuinely love doing them. But you know, the city, the, the style I actually prefer to do. Can you bring up two different ones? Sure. Bring up the old countries complete for me. Yep, right here. There you go. Oh yes. Okay. You should do more of these. They are fantastic. So this is my Overland style, or mm -hmm. one of three styles. Mm -hmm. And this they is are probably gorgeous. one of my favorite styles to do. And mm -hmm. I don't do that many Overland ones. But if someone says, Anna, you know what this is like. This, this is like. So you do a lot of Greyhawk maps, uh, or so rumor has it. Mm -hmm. And you... Um, you, uh, uh, probably most of the time you're over land, right? Dep depending on the scale, you're mostly over yep. land. You don't do dungeon maps for the most part. You don't do city maps for the most part. But how many times does someone come to you and say, oh, I love that region map you did. Can you draw me a city? Yep. I get I, that I, too. Yep. Mm -hmm. I get yep. that. So it's like, oh, I love that city map you did for Jeff D. Mm -hmm. Will you do me an overland? And yep. this is a style that I ended up developing to address that. Mm -hmm. It's um, the only I can say it's Lord of the Rings because it's not really isometric. It's a little bit like bird's eye view. I like doing this. It, it, I don't get asked yeah. for it too often, maybe once a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, had, yep. you said you had a second one you wanted me to bring up. Yeah, the second one is Brickshire. Yep. Uh, yep. Absolutely. Uh, the Absolutely. colored version. Okay. This there we go. And this is probably as close as I get to in the Anamaya world here. Okay. Yeah, but I yeah, it's it's fantastic. 
and and Pop I love down. how you do the hill shading is is really cool. It's it's uh, yeah, you use some of that same technique as Mike Schley, but you you outline it a little bit, and but then you shading it really beautiful as well. So Mike it's, it's, Schley has been very inspirational to me. I do I I used to look at his artwork a yeah, lot. Yeah, but you take in part of his his technique, and then you developed a, a, a going taken, in a different direction than exactly. He has to, yeah, yeah. I took my nineteen yeah. nineties me. Yeah. Slay came along. Uh -huh. I kind of combined the two, and this is yeah. the result. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love doing this style. Mm -hmm. I get asked for it very rarely. Oh, yeah, I like, can totally but get it that. It looks lovely. I want to do more of this. Yeah. I don't get asked for it much because everyone says, oh, no, do, do the isometric style. It's so much better. But I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, but this is beautiful. Add some little clouds. It looks like you're in I a was just going to say, how, how did you came up with the idea of putting clouds there? Because it's it's kind of awesome and irritating at the same time because it, it shields something. But it makes it look oh, so no. real. Tell me about it. Tell me about <laughs> it. Like, uh, honestly, everyone loves my clouds. So we're added into some early uh, colored yeah. versions of my city maps mm -hmm. where you could cover some things. And it was fine. Yeah. Honestly, Anna, between you and I, and everyone that's watching, but shh, like, let's yeah. ignore that for a moment. Between yeah. you and I, <laughs> I hate putting labels and clouds on my maps. Okay. Uh -huh. yep. so yeah, labels are labels. pain because yeah. they, they, sh they, they clutter up things. So, yeah, I, I totally agree. Labels are, 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 are difficult. So, they, so they, yeah. They, they cover up things, and you've got to yep. do it sometimes. And so yep. I, 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 I will do little labels if I can. Yep. But the bigger the label, the more it covers up and clouds fall into this, the more I start to go. Yep. But this one, I could get away with it because they're not covering up anything really of note, and it just adds to the artistic aspect to it. So yep. I'm okay with it on this style. It's it's cool. I uh, so uh, was this a, was this a commission for uh, for a book or for a actually yeah this was for um, Post World Games Jim Pinto I, th I think the company's just Post World yeah. Games okay. he's a very talented game designer actually that does not get the credit that he deserves and this is for a game setting called um, King for a Day okay. And I ended up doing quite a few maps for that piece. And he yeah. launched it actually in the last couple of years um, because I redid some of the maps and colored them and so on and so forth. Um, it's honestly, it's a great thing. It's completely systemless. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's an entire valley. <clears throat> it's got all of the NPCs and the settlements done. And I yeah. think it, uh, uh, if I'm going to toot my own horn for a moment, I love this map. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's... And yet it's people gloss over it so quickly. Yeah, and and uh, I yeah I love this map too. It's it's so beautiful. It's cute, beautiful, illustrative, and and just fantasy, yes, all of it. So absolutely. To speak. And, and I love the clouds because they add character to it. And mm. and this map has just like a lot of my maps, even if they might be beautiful, they lack character in a way. And and your maps oozes character. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's kind of really cool. It's it's not to degrade my own maps because I think they are in their own right kind of awesome in, in some of them. But 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 they lack the, that fantasy-esque character. Some and sometimes I, I really want to have it. Sometimes I, no I just want all the raw info periods so to speak. But but and I've done one map with clouds on it. I've made a version that I called true uh, true worth and and I just posted it once and I didn't get a good response so I haven't done any huh. future works but I can share my screen we can see if that works and yes, can set it. that up and it. see here yeah, we go see, let me hit the right it. button first here yeah. and yeah, boom while you're doing that I added clouds to mine um yep. uh, one of some of my early stuff yep. really just because to add character and yep. then I did a, a map pack for pro fantasy and they were like don't forget put in some of your famous clouds I'm like oh <laughs> yeah Mm -hmm. Clouds are a thing, apparently. Yep. So yep. now I occasionally throw them in just because apparently that's expected. Yeah. So, so I, I looked at, at real photos from space, so to speak, okay, and I realized okay. what would, would – and this – I took high uh, folk and, and the areas around Yatils and stuff because I wanted to. So I, I basically tweaked it, and this is all Photoshop afterwards, so to speak. So there's no real 3D in it, and I just, I just walked around, and this is one hour of testing. And 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 I was kind of cool. It was like, yeah, 
if I can do this in one hour, I can make make it look real good, so to speak. But but the problem is that the underlying terrain is not good enough for this type of work, but it's the next generation will be. So then we can get true satellite image over worth. So, so it's it's kind of the, <laughs> the, the test to, to get to see. But uh, And I can actually, you can automate this process in, in using uh, GIS technology. So, so I'm, but that's something for a future show we need to dig into when we have more examples. But that's my, one of my few maps that actually put color, could put clouds. Well, they are clouds on my Greyhawk map too. And, and Len Lakofka hated some of them. So <laughs> that was one of the- The Len test. Uh, yes, the Len test. It was always so, the Len yeah. test. Yeah. Now you can I think switch to a back degree, again if you want. It's got to be about scale, right, Anna? And like- yeah. I can imagine like if you got a lot of cloud on a scale like this, you are inevitably going to cover something up. Mm -hmm. And as an artist, oh, yeah. That, yeah. that's going to rub you the wrong way. Oh, yeah, yeah. This this was more to, to see if I can t take the existing Greyhawk map and actually make it look like a satellite picture. And 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 I realized it was not too, too bad for being a quick and dirty job. And now you realize something that I do a lot of this kind of quick tweaking, so to speak, a, a lot of lot of thinking and then I want things done so to speak i want to be efficient and and because the process takes so long and that's one of the problems with my style is that it takes a long time takes a lot of planning so so that's why when i do my adventures i do a lot of the seat of the pants mapping so to speak and that's something we should talk about should we switch back again so sure to, yeah mm -hmm. hit the right button jay hit the yep. right button i'm talking to myself sorry no problem there we yep. go so um How, I know this question is going to take a little while. How do you get to where you are now? <laughs> right? How do you level up your skill? Yeah. You know, you got to this point and we showed some older maps and we're showing some really cool, cool new stuff now. Um, yeah. What, what do you do? Alyssa, how did you get where you are? Yes. Okay. Um, so I think first and foremost, um, Okay, this is this is somewhat of a trope, and I, I hate to be the, the one that's going to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Do it a lot, um, okay. whether you're uh, working digitally, whether you're doing something like Anna Maya is doing, whether you're hand drawing something. Do it over and over and over and be willing to make mistakes and be willing to have an open heart and open mind to look at your own work and say, yeah, but I want to evolve. I want to evolve. I want to get better each time. Like we looked at some of my earlier pieces from 20 plus years ago and there are elements that I have brought forward and there are elements, honestly, where I, I looked at it one day, I don't like that. I'm going to try something different and trying something different and continually trying to evolve uh, all of the time is definitely part of it you have to, it's like i used to be a programmer a software programmer and i had the same mentality i never ever ever said that i was a good programmer and i actually used to be a damn good one but it's like i always constantly wanted to be a better programmer so i think you've got to be the same when you're um, a cartographer yeah um or uh, so and that as long as you have that open mind and open heart you will honestly look at other people's work or real life examples or illustrations and say, I, I like that. I want to try something like that and onboard it because you're constantly then evolving. For me, uh, it, it's been what a 30 year or something like that journey mm -hmm. um, and 10 years of it also professionally, true professional. And it, it's been but even right back then i would draw, like even drawing castles i'm terrible at drawing castles i love castles i'm, I'm terrible at them and um, so i'm always looking to get better and better and better and finding my voice in, in the work and realizing what i'm doing well and keeping that while getting rid of the others and moving on anna mm -hmm. yeah it, I, i agree with everything and and i simply keep doing it and and for me it was like having a vision what I wanted to do, meaning 30 years ago, or yeah, some, when I've had the box set and seen the Darlene map for three, four years, I dreamt of, of and, and seen examples of digital maps. I dreamt of having something like the Greyhawk map. And it took me 25 years from then or, or something to make it a reality. And now 10 years into that process, like 10 years ago or 15 years ago, I, I knew, okay, 
this is not my end goal. Now I want to do it all over again and do it better. And 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 the Midgard map here is is half a generation newer, so to speak. It's is twice as good. The, the terrain is twice as good as the Greyhawk one. And now I want to 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 start all over again and do Greyhawk again with the cutting edge technology and and to make it even better and and to present what the, the Flannies in in my concept of it, so to speak, actually looks like. So so it's it's kind of I want to and and just raise the bar constantly and like you said, listen to your critiques, but don't let the critique get to you too much. But you have to listen to it because the, the my quality assurance team, both from the the content standpoint, meaning to get the things in the right spot, but also stylistic, they they will tell you what. So listen to them. And, and so have a vision, work hard at it, and listen and be inspired and think outside the box. And, and, all, always, and, and always realize that maps are more than a pretty picture. Even if a lot of publishers and others don't understand the difference, you as a cartographer need to understand the usefulness of a map needs to be good. Not only it needs to look good, yes, especially if you want someone to pay you for it, it needs to look good, but it needs also needs to be useful. And, and that's where you need to, to start using your own maps and you need to ask others how they're using it. And, and you just need to, and keep at it, keep at it. No one gets, well, there, there's probably some, some wonder kid somewhere who gets good at this in a couple of years, but I don't think so. I think all good cartographers are, are been at this for, for, for a decade or more. It takes that and you need to understand the real world. In, in order to, you need to know what real words look like. But it's like, I see published maps, they don't even understand how rivers flow and, and, and they don't even get it and, and stuff. So, so when you don't even understand how the real world works on, on a fundamental level, meaning how geography works kind of, then, then you're not a good cartographer. And so, so it's, it's, you need to have, it's because cartography had this weird thing of being a technical endeavor in, on one side and then an artistic endeavor on the other side. And then you need to somehow find your way you want to be on that continuum, so to speak. And, 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 and then and experiment. Sometimes you're out here, sometimes you're there. And different maps require different handiwork and different I've, I've actually got a few recent maps where I've screwed up yeah. the coloring because I tried yeah. something yeah. and I, I thought it was going to work and it yeah. didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Just and live, learn, shrug, mm -hmm. move on. It's even oh, yeah. less about the outside critics, I find. Mm -hmm. It's more about the inner Don't critic, go. right? Oh, yes. Well, but you that can take one a look is, at yourself. Is, yeah, but you never said I'm ne never satisfied with my work. I can be like, oh, that was good work, but I've never. I always realize I can do better afterwards. So, I, yeah. I've actually, um, I've got a small video series that I've been working on where I critique my own work. I dig mm -hmm. up the maps from the '90s and the early 2000s, oh, and I, don't I talk. Even dare to do I, that I, 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 and I look at my own work. And yeah. I say, well, you know, this is good. This is what I've continued to evolve. This is bad. Let me tell you why I dropped this as a style. So I'm kind of putting voice to my own critique of myself, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And I think you just, just be willing to do that. And don't expect perfection and don't get overwhelmed. You know, when yeah. Anna says, learn the real world, she's right. But you're not going to know about the movement of tectonic plates no, to no, no. You with and weather patterns. Don't worry about it. You know, there's a, there's a scale of what you need to know to begin with and just evolve. And learn as much so to inspire you at first. And then you learn more as needed. And, and this is like eating an elephant. You do it one piece at a time. That's the, the other key thing. It, and, and it takes a long time to figure it out, so to speak. So, yeah. And realize that I work with software that's taken me 10 years to figure out. And, and so, so it's a long when you really want to go deep. And the other problem is that sometimes you want to have, we have a vision and you want to do something and there's no one else who's done it. And meaning when I want to take 3D tools that are made for video games and Hollywood movies and stuff to do terrain for, for, for backdrop and matte paint um, painting and, and video games, and I want to do a game setting, it was not meant to do it. So I had to kind of tweak it. So, 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 yeah, no eating elephants. No, uh, yeah, but, uh, and, and also I, I involve elephants and pancakes this week in, in map making. And that's the other kind of fun bit, but yeah.
<laughs> so let's do some uh, general Q and A here. You know, we're yeah. an hour and a half in already. Imagine how, yeah. that's how quick the time has gone by. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, and you saw Biggie Paul's question there, Alyssa. What's your what, the most difficult map you've ever made? Yeah, right. that's a good one. I, I'm going to answer that in two parts because that's apparently the way I work. And the more shows we do like this, you're going to find I give you two answers when you asked for one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to do it in two parts because actually the most difficult map I ever made historically was a map I did for Whisper and Venom and Zach Glazer, who now is a chief operating um, officer, manager of... Um, Troll Lord Games. Troll Lord? Troll yeah. Lord? For God. For God Games. For God. Um, yeah. And he, so I, he asked me for an Overland map. It was done in the style of the old countries that you just saw right there. Oh, and he was the up. first person that ever contacted me to draw this style. This style? Not, not hey. that style. Oh, not no. that style. The, uh, oh, bring this up style. the old countries. No, old countries. Old countries. Got, got, old it, countries. got it, got it, got it. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, it's a semi-isometric yes. bird's eye view, Lord of the Rings. Home in on the trees there a little bit at the top. It's a little bit more green. Old countries yeah, went we way out there. That was for Timothy really. Brown, uh, mm-hmm. the guy from Dark Sun. Uh, so it was, it, that was a project. But Zach Glazer, um, you know, he asked me for this overland map. He gave me a sketch. Thank you, publisher, for giving me a sketch. That's always mm-hmm. appreciated. Yep. But I've never done this style, ever. And I drew something for him, and he is the only client that pushed it back across the table and said, this is good, but give me better. Give me beyond Mm -hmm. what you're currently capable of doing. And he almost used words like that. He was like, I don't care what it costs. Give me a wow piece. And I was like, oh, this is this is different. This is a different level. And I I went nuts. And this this style kind of got born from that actually zach glazer if i'm going to be fair broke the the, the ceiling for me he Ooh. forced me to go beyond it That's and awesome. yeah. that was it was a challenge but it also just it changed everything that i do mm-hmm. the hardest map though that i'm ever going to do career to date is actually going to be later this year because i've been asked to draw a drow city underground is that the the one that um, Anna that you were asked about? Nope. No. Nope, nope, okay. Nope. nope. <laughs> I knew there was a tough one. Uh, yeah. Yep. It was going to yep. take a lot of time. Dr- uh, yep. Wow. An underground drought city. Yeah. Wow. But I, I, it's going to be difficult because I'm. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it 3D. And wow. I don't, I don't do 3D that much. Oh, that's you know? awesome. So it, this is going to be raising the bar for myself here. Without awesome. a doubt. Cool. But I've already that's kind awesome. of decided that it needs yep. it because yeah. I mean I've done a city like uh, underground mm-hmm. um uh, lord because somebody you don't have a copy of it uh, but okay. i will give you one yeah and i it, it's like you can't really portray buildings going up a spire you know of a stalagmite of and a underground size. city sounds twice as difficult that way uh, and yeah. bridges in between mm-hmm. and things that's and where my ceiling how going. do you portray that the ceiling stuff. yeah so i'm gonna draw that 3d and it'll probably be yeah. the toughest map i've ever done ever yeah. and that will be the ones so later yeah. this year. I'll start working on it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, my most difficult one was Brilliant East for Midgard. It's not published yet. I did it two years ago, and that, there you see how long it takes. That was something wow. I started three years ago. I did it two years ago, and I started three years ago. It was finished like a year and a half ago or something like that. And 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 then I can talk about it a little bit. I can't show it yet because it's it's not being published yet. But I can talk about it because the project has been announced. They know it's it's coming. So so I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. So so sooner or later, I hope. And and so I did. And my problem was that I fell into a trap. My own on my own making that map became the most difficult one I've ever done. The problem was that I had provided a sketch of the area to them. And, and when you provide a sketch, it's, um, it's a sketch, meaning it was, things were not absolutely in proportion and stuff. But the problem is that some of the authors and stuff, they started taking a ruler to it and started to say, this is whatever. And that didn't make sense from any perspective, so to speak. So, so halfway through or what have in, we have, the, oh, I didn't thought about that that way. And I thought this was so, that was, oh, that was terrible. So halfway in, 
I had to to redo large part of it, and and we we sorted it out. And but I, I was real pissed and angry. So so I needed an, another friend, Linda Booth. Thank you so much for taking my call and <laughs> and and hearing me gripe for three hours after some meetings, and then go back and rework three hour three months of of the stuff. And this is another thing. Two of the projects, Southlands that I did for for Midgard, I asked for a year. When I had was seven months into the project, I realized this is not good enough. I started over again, wow. started from scratch and worked 60 hour weeks for three months and did it all again. And I'm so happy that I did because the first one, the, the, the Cobalt Press and Wolfgang, they liked the first one, but I didn't. So I just, I didn't even tell them. I just skipped it worked like crazy and then presented a new one. I actually kept the fake one updated a bit so I can hide the true one <laughs> because I wanted to do it in secret wow. and then present it. So sometimes you have to take risks in order to really go out on a limb. And that broke for me, that broke a new, because the, the I did the old first version of, of South, Southlands basically like I did the Flannies map. And that was like, no, I did that 20 years ago. It doesn't cut it. So then I went back again and redid it and, and learned and, and did it. And that became the staple of have I done Midgard maps ever since. So it's it's really, yeah. So sometimes you you just, things don't work all the time and, and you, you end up in these kind of, yeah, one-way streets where you've gone the, the wrong way and you just have to back out again. Yeah. It's some great. It's a it's a great question. Here's a here's one that's technical that uh, Troy Cannibal asks. Yep. What would you? Uh, I guess a list of this is well. It could be both here. What What would you say is the next upgrade to go from a Wacom small tablet to drawing pen display graphic monitor? An upgrade, yeah. a bigger one. A big um, one. <laughs> I I have to. Well, so it, it depends. What I mean. So if you've got a tablet which is detached from the screen, so you're kind of drawing over here, but you're locking up here. Um, that's fine. That works very well. Um, I have the um, Cintiq 24-inch HD Touch, where my monitor is the tablet. Oh, wow. And so where my pen goes, it, it's li I'm literally drawing on the monitor, so to speak. And so it's a direct feel. You have that very pen on paper touch. There's no brain disconnect. And I know you can, you can figure out that disconnect and you can get used to it. But it's nothing quite like taking your monitor, which I used to play Borderlands 3 on, lying it <laughs> flat and drawing directly on it. And you can pinch zoom and do all of them, uh, you know, the gestures, but you're drawing it right there. That for me blew the lid off things. Um, and it made me a better cartographer. And honestly, uh, while Wacom is expensive, they are. And there's uh, there are some Chinese um, versions that oh, yeah. definitely mm -hmm. are a third of the price, which I yeah. would heavily consider. I really would. Oh, yeah, they, they are getting good. So apparently Oh, they're getting they're... really good. Yeah. Uh, but if I was going to upgrade, I would just get a bigger version of this Wacom, and I'd probably get yeah. their 32-inch version in yeah. Ultra. I have yeah. to ask and... roughly how much that 32-inch Wacom would cost. Roughly. Oh, I think it's like three grand, something okay. like yeah. that. Yeah, they're okay. expensive. Yeah, yeah. I have, it's, it's, I have... doable. Yeah, it's doable. Yeah. It's doable, yeah. but 10, it's... it's, it's yeah. It's yeah. it's not okay. it's not just like throwing away five hundred bucks. Um, yeah. God, what Anna? Uh, what is the name of the Chinese company that do these things? Huan, I, I think it. Huan, Huan is what, Huan. yeah. Huan is one of them. Yeah. I think. Huan. Yeah. like Huan will do one for eight hundred dollars, and it yeah. will be twenty five, three thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah. And, and the hardware is good. It's usually the driver support in various tools and stuff that might be a bit iffy. Oh, the Wacom is not that good with their drivers. No, the, sometimes I mean, they're yeah, they're, yeah. And I have a. Yeah, I have one of these into his. I have I have two Wacom devices. Actually, yeah, two. So I have one that. You're going to tell me now that you have three Wacom 32 inches. No, 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 no. I have a. And 16... you do your flying yeah. on them. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I have. Well, that, that's the other thing. I have four screens, and one of them is a Wacom 16 inch that you can draw on. And then I have one of these separate little Wacom tablets that I sit back. And which one I prefer depends on what I'm doing. Most of the times when I'm working on texture stuff, I like I love to sit, lean back, and and just. To use that brain disconnect and try to get over it because I don't need that much precision. But sometimes when I'm working on 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 maps for my next game and I want to to draw little buildings and stuff like that for my village map, then I love to dig in and and do 
look at the map and use the pen on the screen, so to speak. So, so, so that's, but I, I can't do that for long because I'm hunched over and my back goes bad if I do that ah. for more than uh, Apparently I've just got used to my back not having nerves okay. or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, so the, the whack on, I will say, uh, and maybe this will be a subject for a future stream too. Um, the, the, the difference between Wacom and Huon, uh, from what I can tell, is Huon does not have gestures. It does not have touch yep. mm -hmm. on it. Yep. And I I think you could train yourself not to have it. Uh, but if, yeah, if I'd you, never use touch. I don't want if my you never fingers use touch, to... you don't care. Exactly. I use touch yeah. all of the time. So no, I, 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 don't even, I don't even want that to... I and I have touched on both of them devices, but I make sure that I turn it off and it turns on and all th things happen when I put my fingers on it. I get like, ooh, and, and, and I want to turn it off. So I, I don't like that at all. I want you, you would hate me. Touch. I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. Oh, it's <laughs> <you>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no not for me. Yeah. Interesting question uh, that we got that mm -hmm. technically. Uh, it's good. Great to, question. It's good to see yep. that's uh, you know, and Troy is one of our ardent mm -hmm. supporters here, which is yeah. great to see. That I know he's doing a lot of work in the uh, Cannon Fire community, especially with underwater maps. He's cool. been doing. He's yep. been doing a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, what do you think? All right. This is going to be a very general question. What is your next goal in your de in your overall development? Like where you want to go next with with what you're doing cartography wise? Is it is it you know a, um, a t new type of map or just a new type of yeah. uh, for, something you've learned yeah, for both? Yeah, of you. for me it's GIS uh, ge uh, geographical information systems. I want to to level up and and start. So I have two main goals to to reach in in my career next. So next couple of years I want to. to be able to master geographical information system. I've studied it for okay. five, six years. I'm starting to feel like I'm into it, but I want to be real good at it. And I want to develop the style part of it. And, and there's so many cool things you can do with GIS. So, so, so that is the technology I want to put in. And after that is game engines. That's where I want my, my, that's the ultimate goal. So those are two gigantic hurdles to, to get over, so to speak. It's, it's one you normally have to go to somewhere and get a degree in order to, to learn it. So, so I'm trying to learn it on, on my own, so to speak, and, and, and to get there. So I've used, I'm, I've been a heavy user of GIS. So I know what it is from the user perspective. Now I have to be a producer of it and I need to learn that way. And GIS is fairly straightforward if you have the data real world, the problem is here you need to produce the data in order to create the maps. And that bit is much less, that's much more esoteric because 90% of people that use GIS, they are users of real data and, and stuff like that from the real world. And the map, yeah. the real world is there. You just import the data and then you make something cool looking in GIS. The problem is that I creating the world data to put in. And that's the most difficult. You mean like this? Yeah, that's the, the, so the base data to put in. And then you can take that on a global scale. And the cool thing with GIS is you can restyle it. You can rescale it. You can do all sorts of tweaks with it on the fly. And it's also people can import the data into all sorts of other tools, Google Earth, all sorts of cool things. You can have web-based maps. You can have mobile maps. You can do all sorts of things because it's basically something that the end user can reshape and restyle as needed so to speak so i what i the end goal with that was basically just have a, a geographical information server sitting somewhere where people can just download whatever type of data they want and present it and and then make an app for it so yeah very cool yes how um Alyssa, what would you like to say to uh, i'm going to answer that question but it, it, it because it's topical Cannibal says ArcGIS Desktop or ArcGIS Pro. Okay. Yeah, I, I want to go with QGIS first, but Arc, I'm, I'm studying to see which one, which tool. I will probably use both ArcGIS Pro and, and QGIS, both of them, I think, down the line. But I want to do as much as possible using QGIS because I want the all the stuff to be usable. I want someone else to take what I do and convert it and tweak it for their own campaigns. That's one of the goals with this. So I want to use open tools and, and open source tools as much as possible. So, so that way, but, but there might be, I might 
make sure that all the data is is packaged and stuff so you can be used in QGIS. And then I want to might use ArcGIS desktop or something to make cool versions for print and stuff. That is probably going to be the case down the line. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to sound like a right asshole <laughs> to you. Uh oh. Um, well, I don't think so. No, no. So, you know, you're being very, I want to use this technology. I want to create sort of game things. I want people yeah. to be able to take this and I want to empower them. And so, you know, mm -hmm. me. You know, my next level. So yeah. I the, the map actually that's up right now that Lord Gasumba's got shared was Catalal for um Jeff D. Yeah, and um, it looks so great. It, it, yeah. I love doing this map. It was maybe the second map I did with my Wacom tablet. Yeah. But the thing about this map is it's based in Tecumel. Tecumel is something it, it, it's a little bit like Greyhawk in some ways, right? It's canon, it's got its followers. You have to get it right. Yeah. And there's a temple in this area that actually had a scenario that had the temple drawn in it. And I had to match that temple, right? Yeah. Um, but now you're talking, we grey hawkers, we know exactly what you're talking right. about. Right. Because we well, know what it looks like, what it should so look like. Yeah. For me, this was my first taste. It's very topical, actually, because somebody yeah. had this up. <laughs> for me, this was my first taste of drawing something. How can I phrase this? D that was almost you're defining canon yeah right mm -hmm. yep. this map is going in the vault so yep. to speak and this... that's a big responsibility it's it like, is think, it is think, yeah think about darlene for greyhawk meaning mm -hmm. for midgard and and that was the other story for midgard is that that when i got the first um, task of, of of drawing a map of midgard for southlands and and then redraw it for for midgard the thing was that Jonathan Roberts had done the maps before me. And I got two jobs that year, three actually, and all three was to redo what Jonathan Roberts had done. And you, most people Stuff. don't realize who Jonathan Roberts is. He did the map for Game of Thrones that year. Oh, wow. And that was kind of scary. Meaning someone tell me, oh, I had Jonathan Roberts did a map when Game of Thrones were going like this was gangbusters. It was the coolest thing in fantasy ever. And the guy who did the map for Game of Thrones, someone told, asked me, can you do better than his map? That was a little bit like, oh, oh, oh this is getting scary. And I got three jobs to, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with how it turned out and that I actually had to, to redo what he did in, in, in a new version of it, so to speak. So awesome. sometimes you get these things that are kind of, ooh, ooh a little bit scary. So, which, yeah. which temple here? I got to ask that, Alyssa. Yeah. Which oh, color? Um, actually, you're pretty close to it. Don't ask me to name the temple, please. Which color I is don't... it? Just which one? Uh, it's actually <laughs> fairly red. I think if you zoom this in one? to the left, no, oh. actually, um, the, and scroll down a little bit right there, that red top one, this one? right there. Yep. Okay. Okay. Oh, they, Apparently they that had a scenario good. in the past, uh, um, yeah. but my point being for this, this was my first time, yes, uh, like feeling the power. So here's where Anna and I split into the uh, the good side and the evil side. Mm -hmm. Me being the dark side, okay? No, 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 no. Because I <laughs> felt I felt the power. Because yeah. now I've created something that is canon, mm -hmm. and then more recently I was asked to redraw. I know you were talking about redrawing things. I was yeah. asked to redraw um, the Gaxmo map oh, for Troll yes. Games. Mm -hmm. Really? Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, so that, that one is, uh, you know, maybe we could share that in a future show. I didn't oh, give yeah. you that. But yeah. their recent Kickstarter, I redrew Gaxmo. So there is a certain responsibility. You have to match canon. You have mm -hmm. to at least look like something that's been created before. Yeah. But if what has been created before you as a member of the dark side tend to think looks like crap you at being me i want to go oh i can really bring it on this thing and i want to put that little stamp of follow this and that's kind of where i'm at right now yeah. i want to create i want to create the a definitive i want to create definitive maps that are very very hard to follow for popular systems and settings gax more corrupted me because i cr i created a map i feel will be very hard to follow and i i am a modest person 
but I know my skill. And I created something there that looks pretty damn good. Let me loose on something that has mass popularity and I will do some harm to it. I will do some serious harm. And I, I that's what I want to do. I want to create a definitive piece. I mean, I did, okay, look, I did Teagle Manor a couple of years ago for Five Guard Games. And I did it 12 feet across. <laughs> no one else is going to do a Teagle Manor like I did on that one. And that's no one. Bit, and you had to repeat what was done from all the years back too, right? Right. You and know, I did. The original. And it is true to the original. And it kicks freaking ass because it's got my level of detail to every single room. Nice. I want to do that. Like, if I could do that in a couple of Greyhawk cities or something, I, I want to, I, I honestly want to put my stamp on a couple of things, a couple of properties yep. mm -hmm. that basically says, excuse my French, but yep. follow this, bitches. That's <laughs> what I yep. want to do. Mm -hmm. I, I seriously, I want to guys... create my yep. masterpiece mm -hmm. that, like, the, the RPG world goes, Oh damn! Yeah. That's what. And I now you do. realize that who I want as one of my partners on doing the city of Greyhawk in two or three years. That is Ooh. something Alyssa and me should Ooh. dig into and do because I think our different um, strengths and weaknesses could complement each other real well. Because you're going to do the that. Gord Greyhawk. Well, yeah, but also what we can do, I I provide the overall terrain, and and then Alyssa can go in and oh, and detail, and the blocks, detail blocks all the and blocks and cities Ooh. and paint all the stands at the market and and the little cats in the backyard alleys and all that stuff. Very yeah. very cool. So we could we could we should we should start thinking about it. Would be it would be the definitive edition as far as yes, I'm concerned. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And we should so do two while versions. While you are the light do... side and you yeah. keep me true to the cause, I yeah. am the dark side and I'm like, yeah, let's create something that future generations struggle yeah, to Yeah, but top. and also it's meaning a city of that size, 50%, 90% maybe, or at least between 50 and or 75 and 90% has never been described. 90% of sure. the building is that city. It's never been written about. They've never been whatever. The, and yeah, th there's sure. one version and the TSR version that has a, a kind of an illustration of the city that can be used to, to, to map yeah. as a good thing. But that is the easy one. And But to dig into Gary's version that is four times bigger and has way more content into it. And a lot of That one, I think, will be there. the yeah. definitive well, version. Big, Biggie yeah. Paul says the queens of maps collaborating would be amazing. Yes, and it, it would. Yeah. And I am on board. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's something because I think it, in a start, yeah, because we need to start doing research. And that's when I reach out to everyone sketches idea make sure that all the city streets and stuff like that this needs to be sketched out in detail a year or two in advance i know something so, else you could yeah. collaborate on though yeah <laughs> There's oh, you mean Altamira? <laughs> yeah, it could be a test case. Yes, My, it yes. could be a test case. Yes. Well, and you know, all, the, in yeah. all truth, I've been genuinely thinking about stopping all commissions, so mm -hmm. just to work on things like this. In all truth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like yep. I, I will do commissions for Troll Lord. I'll do commissions for Frog Guard. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, I've actually started some work for KRCM recently, and yep. I love KRCM. Of course, I'm going to do work for them. But outside of that, just working on projects like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So listen, I'm not going to. Here's my city map for Altamir. <laughs> That's what I have. That is yeah, all. But like Anna said earlier, this is form and function. Who is the audience and what do they need to know? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Yes. Everything goes on my table. All my, you yeah. know, my, but you my see, maps there you are have on the table. That is yeah. Super good. Yeah, I got the reference. And honestly, market. if a client hands me something like this, yeah. I am. So, we'll talk about this in another episode. We'll oh, yeah. About clients. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and, and how to be a good client. But mm -hmm. this is a, a, an immediate plus five points from a client perspective. I'm like, uh, and Age of, uh, Age of Antiquity did that. They gave me a shape of the city. I knew there was a river. They gave me the main locations of the POIs. They even told me which POIs needed to be on it. You've mm -hmm. done that right here. I'm like, okay, you've just, you've just solved yep. eight hours and that of my time. That yeah, uh, and the bar you're... is not that high when it comes to being a client because sometimes you don't get. You, there's usually two things: you either cool. get nothing, 
or you get the kitchen sink, meaning they just send you 25 PDFs or uh, yeah. 12 novels with like 2,600 pages. Well, then, then the information is in there somewhere. You can just read it and find it out or something. So yeah, it can be real bad. Yeah. So this ties into the last question of the night we'll take. And that was from the great mm -hmm. Pex here. Uh, yeah. and he said, uh, if you could continue to work on one of your maps that is quote unquote complete, which one would it be and why? And it kind of ties into what we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah. So um, for me, there's two maps I want to do. One Greyhawk, and that's Hipmona Land, because yeah. we have the top of the Hipmona Land. We want, yeah. I want the, the rest of it, so to speak. That's one. And for Midgard, there is one that I really want to do. And I know that there is much likelihood that Wolfgang will call me or email me in, in a year <laughs> or so asking, is that, and that's the Northlands. The, the north of the mid of the the, um, the 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 central area so to speak of, of midgard to do that and and we've sketched it out already it's sketched and and, and i can't show you that one but there sure. is a sketch of it and there's some and i did that sketch so i got a lot of, of of artistic freedom so to speak mapping freedom on that one and there are some and and because i i haven't done a really cold arctic expanse yet and and i begged wolfgang say hold off on that one some years because i want to learn now i'm starting to get there now i think i can do it justice and and it's kind of it will be real cool so to speak so so it, it an arctic and and sometimes i like those challenges like take like shield lands, for instance, on the Darlene map is just a green bunch of hexes. There is no details whatsoever, nothing. Even the if you read the stories, there is nothing about what the landscape looked like or anything. And and there's a couple of rivers, like two rivers. That's it. There's nothing else. No no names that gives you information of what the landscape looked like. I like these kind of challenges to to make that difficult nothing into something interesting. That's something I, I like to do a lot. And that's something which we, when we dig into big settings or large scale maps, there's a lot to talk about. But those are the two maps that I would like to, to expand and continue work on. Awesome. And Alyssa, how about you with that question? Something you'd right. like to continue with. Um, well, so it's a question. Continue. Yeah, so something that's complete. Work on, you may want yeah. to, yeah, you or want expand, to expand on, on or something like you've done one bit, and then there's like one other yeah. bit dying. Yeah, because I've got a couple of dream maps that I would love to do, yeah. but I've had no hand in them yet. Oh, okay. Um, and I would love to have a hand in them. Um, okay. But if we're gonna stick with just ones I've started, yeah. Then it changes the playing field a little bit. Um, so I'm going to bend the question just a sure. mm -hmm. Uh Because honestly, uh, I'm all about city maps. I'm working on something as iconic as Greyhawk. Yes, I want to do something like that. I want to do Bard's Gate. Um, wow. For, 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 uh, I want to do that. Um, I would love to do Tullus, to be honest with you. I have no, I've worked in that world. And there's a couple of smaller pieces of mine in that world. So I, it counts for me. What would I like to really do? I would love to redraw Tallis, ground up completely. I would yeah. love to do something like that. Um, I'd bring my flair to it. Okay. And um, on the other end of the scale, a dungeon map, expedition to the barrier peaks. Oh. I would love to do that one. Yes, I, I, but do it Teagle Manor style. Yeah, one That's inch. That's so good because it's five not, feet. Uh, not on my high list to do. So it's perfect. You, you, that <laughs> that is for you. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to do it. I mean, Teagle Manor was twelve feet across. I think it was twelve yeah. feet by twelve feet. Oh, and I'm sh I'm pretty sure that you know expedition would be maybe bigger than that. Um, I would love to do that. Every single freaking layer, I would mm -hmm. love to do it. That yeah. that is on my wish list. It's um, that would be cool. I mean, it's so iconic, and uh, you know, and some people love it or hate it because of the technology evolved in Greyhawk. Some people are, you know, and it's not a Greyhawk uh, tech person, but some people, I you know, Mike Disney. It's one of his favorites of all time. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Without the intertwinings of the Watsy issue, though, <laughs> you know. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. But I would, I would love to do that. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, I sat yeah. there for like the three levels. hours once drawing one room in Seagull Manor. I would yeah. love to do that. 
Whew. level of detail and it, it, like just lavish the love on barrier yeah. peaks. And, and and we have one other map that we uh, Greyhawk City, and then we have one, and that that is the Slerutins Tunnel. Oh, three hundred yes. miles of Dunian yes. maps yes. under yes. the mountains. So, yeah. That is something that. Oh, I would so love to do that together. That is one of that, the dream oh projects. The Slerutin tunnels, that their secret passage under the crystal mist and the hell for I feel like you're sneezing when you say that. Yeah, and I have no so familiarity good. with it. But no, but that is, board. yeah, that is <laughs> one of these things that we've, we announced it and we can start working, but we need to work on a concept, how we could present something of that scale. So to, to speak. scale. Two scale. Yeah. Yeah. One, one yeah. inch real life is five feet. In the game. Oh yeah. my gosh. I want to have I want to have Dunyan maps across <laughs> that whole expanse, so to speak. Would be so cool. But and I would love to it, because it's so large, if we have so we can outsource and supervise a project like that, so we can get a few others on board so we can actually do that. And and get because we need to to have someone writing stuff in there, and there need to be f tombs of things that there need to be the Umber Hall community oh, I could and, do, and all sorts of stuff. We could get the Greyhawk community to do exactly. that easily. Exactly, meaning we I mean, should I, do. We should I contribute do, to that. Yeah, Absolutely. we should do that like an adventure path to go through the yeah, Slurrotage yeah. Tunnel. That, that, would, be that awesome. would be fantastic to do it, and and, and, and have some geologists. No. Thinking, what would a volcano look like from under it, so right. to speak? So, you need to go through the how lava tube works. And well, I think big stuff. picture. Yeah, we get Carlos involved and we yes. strip out the Greyhawk names, change yeah. them up, exactly. and then we can we publish could, yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Meaning, we, yeah, meaning that there are so many cool pet There's projects a lot we can we do. Can do. A yeah, lot meaning we can that. work on ten years, twenty years forward doing yeah, stuff that would be, like this. That would and, be yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, and note, it's a, cur it's a curse that Len has passed, but it's a blessing that Len is not here to nitpick everything that would happen <laughs> in that Sir Lorton's tunnel. Because <laughs> you true, know he yeah. would be like, no. Nah, oh, yeah, yeah, he will be like, no, no, oh, no. Oh, my nope. gosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. So, look, uh, you know, okay, we're weird. two that hours cool. already. See how it yeah. flies? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I know Biggie Paw said uh, something really complimentary, and uh, I don't know how far scrolled back it was. Uh, cannot wait for the next stream because this is so amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank and I you. hope this is a great wetting your whistle on yeah, this. Yeah, because this is just an introductory. Just a we should introductory dig deep show. into, yes. meaning we talked about 30 topics today. We should have shows where we dig deep into one or two topics and, and, and talk more about it. Now it's like going all over the board. We we want yes. to be more focused in future show and talk about dungeon mapping or, or, or city mapping or, or, or coastlines or, or, or Photoshop or whatever it is. Right. Or, or is on the next on the next show, Anna is roasting her worst clients and naming names. <laughs> no, 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 no. So we will set the topic up, and all I'll say is it's T. Oh, I hit there. You go. I hit a wrong button, and I, I shouted out oh, Blue Box okay. instead, which is yep. okay. Mm -hmm. A couple yep. of things. I just put up. I just put up uh, Alyssa's and Anna's Patreons. If you haven't uh, signed up for her Patreons, it would be. It's a fantastic thing because you get a lot of detail and content yes. from it. Uh, yeah, and you I, help I, us I, do stuff like this yes. to plan and, and 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 have the technology and take the time to do stuff like this. So that's thank you okay. to all our patrons and and yeah, you make this possible. Yeah, Patrick, thank you. And we'll see. You. I know you got a roll. Yeah, um, thank but you. Note yeah. note note the following. Uh, barring a guest, because guests are always great. If mm -hmm. we were to get some mega guests for the next show, oh, yeah. we'll get the topic yeah, set up and we'll get it out like about two weeks mm -hmm. before the show starts. Yeah. And yeah. we're looking at already the date is a month from roughly a month from today, for, uh, J July 16th, at the same time, 8 p.m. Eastern. That's the day before our Band Adventure fundraiser event. So we got a lot going on that weekend, which will be really yeah. awesome. Thanks. So uh, any anything you'd like to shout out that you're working on or doing? Alyssa, we'll start with you on that topic. Anything? Mm. Um, I, I just want to thank everyone for allowing me to be here. I'm super excited about the future. I think this is going to be an absolutely stunning show that's just going to get better and better and better, without a doubt. And I truly feel at home already. Awesome. Um, what am I working on right now? I'm going to finish up the Age of Antiquity map right there, my largest map in maybe a couple of years. And I'm working on two maps for Chaosium, which I can't tell you about, unfortunately, sure. but they're going to be freaking awesome. And I'm mm -hmm. going to bring the Fade and Fire to the Chaosium camp. That's my intention. So watch out for them. 
Fantastic. Cool. And thank you. Thank you for oh, you know, thank coming you on for... participating yeah. in this. I'm so excited. Um, you know, uh, things are uh, things are going. We live in interesting times, and this uh, uh, everyone loves cartography. It is so. It is such a necessity in the in the visual world we live in with the gaming now. It's just is like this is this is where um, something that uh, you know makes a game it really does uh, you know yeah. having that so mm -hmm. it make it, it is really uh, wonderful uh, anna what do you got going on uh, I well i have you saw the new for griffin lore games that kickstarter just uh, got yep. launched so 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 hang on a second i'll see if i can link to it or, or yeah, we can I'll, I'll link on all my social media and stuff okay. tomorrow and and dig into it and show some examples and stuff so so but it's a uh, griffin lore games it's a kickstarter i forgot what the name of the kickstarter is now so i barely looked at the but it seems to go really well so 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 that will be the hex scroll map so i will produce 15 or 20 or something of, of hexes like that that will look better than that one because that's a concept quickly done so to speak so that's one one um, the only commission i have at the moment and and we haven't really geared up for it so i don't know exactly when i will actually start doing that in the meantime i'm working full time on 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 greyhawk stuff so so the um so the well yeah so oop Oh, I that's, that. yeah. I just no problem. No, 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 no problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's perfect. Yep. Yeah. So, so I, I, I will uh, give the um, kind of finalize. It's uh, the wrong word, but it's to make the Earth map done, so to speak. So there will be a new climate map is already done. So that will be presented, and I will update with the new coastlines and the latest update of Imperia esque uh, map. So I will present the texture map, and then will have that done for now, so to speak, because I think it's good enough for now. So then I will let community digest it and, and see what kind of criticism, long-term criticism will come from it and then go back and redo that this fall or something like that. But it's good enough that I know where the Flannies is. So we can go and, and hit Mona Land and, and Isle of, of, of Dread and stuff. So for, for what's needed for the fall update of the Flannies map and the Atlas and to dig into GIS, it's good enough for that. Then we can tweak how big things should be in the western part of or Eric and, and stuff like that. That's that's secondary. So so it's sure. good enough for that. And then it's basically the continue to work on Lendor Isles, my maps for my campaign, and and start work on on the up Atlas and Flanny's map upgrade for for this fall. That's the the, the main things. Yep. Very cool. <clears throat> Thank you both. We keep busy on this channel, as you know. So, what do yeah. I? What do we have going on here tomorrow, uh, Sunday night? Oh, I, I, I'm off on a, I'm off on a uh, Saturday here. Uh, oh, what, yeah, yeah. yes. You don't stream every day. Yet. Not every day. <laughs> uh, so uh, we got a great discussion. Uh, hey, Brian, thank you for hopping in here and joining us. Welcome. Yeah. So uh, we got Anna, myself, and the ever mysterious Tim. And we, I, I threw in on last Saturday's game, and Anna's the only one that sniffed it out at the beginning. I threw in an anti-paladin, which is, you know, one of the original baddies of all time in old school. So we're going to talk about holy and unholy warriors in our Gavin discussion on Sunday. Paladins, anti-paladins, the Crusader class, knights, all the classes we have in our game. And that's what we're going to discuss on Sunday's show. Okay, so that'll be uh, that'll be a, a fun one, uh, and then Legends and Lore. I don't I don't think I have a banner for this. Uh, Legends and Lore. We're going to talk about governments of Greyhawk on Wednesday night. So we'll go through uh, the different government setups for like the Omenry and the city of Greyhawk and the Great Kingdom. Uh, we'll talk about that myself, Anna, and Greyhawk. Mike Bridges. Uh, some things down the road. Uh, he, July third in the morning, ten a.m. Tim's barbarian group finally gets off the road. I know they've done a session zero, but so we'll get to see the ever mysterious Tim DMing with uh, the underdogs, uh, all those new level barbarians uh, in the rovers of the barons. I, I get to produce that and just sit back and watch Tim kill everyone. So that's, that's fun for me. So uh, yeah, that'll be a uh, Saturday, July 3rd. And then the big next fundraiser uh, event is the Bad Adventure fundraiser, and that's the day after that we'll have our, our second episode of Fancy Mapping Show, Saturday, July 17th. I have already confirmed Eric Mona and James Jacobs to play in the finale. I'm going to – this was all Eric's idea on that uh, that Legends of War we did. Yeah. 
And he's like, uh, let's do, let's run a, run a real bad adventure. One of those classically horrible adventures and let's make a fundraiser out of it. I said, okay, well, I'm going to run Gargoyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, John, and John at Blue Box, who's going to have all the Tailspire VTT execs or the show, stream before, is going to probably run Pep Puppets. So what a fun doubleheader yeah. that'll be. It's all the money's going to go to St. Jude. So uh, that'll be our second St. Jude fundraiser of the year. So that's what we have going on uh, with, uh, um, for now, a lot of other things. We're going to do a hard beach stream on Thursday night, a one shot. Um, so I'll have some fun there. Lots going on. Let's do the giveaways. And then let's, I want everyone to, we're going to raid in Nightheart Gaming, who's got that fundraiser going on tonight and tomorrow. So let's really uh, show them some love. Remember, it's going to be a Mike Disney Overguard print and a twenty-five dollar gift certificate to Troller Games. First winner, you get your choice. You got to be on to claim it. All right, anyone want to sign up last second? Please do that. We'll do the giveaways. This is where uh, this is where Alyssa sometimes Jay hits the wrong button. Hopefully, I don't here. <laughs> so uh... no, I don't believe that. Not for one moment. All right, closing them out. Winner number one. You get your choice of whether you want the twenty-five dollar gift certificate or Ah, Justinius, you win again. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I'll get you out. You uh, Justinius last night won the Mike Disney Scarn painted oh. miniature last night. Zytek 2K. Zytek, great. Grats. Which one do you want, Zytek? Do you want the Mike Disney print, or do you want the $25 gift certificate to Troller Games? Your call. Okay? Just let me know. I know you're on, Zytek. I saw you. You want the 25. Okay, you got the 25 TLG. That's easy enough for me to get to you. And then the winner, for, the second winner is Zump. Zump. Oh, you, that's a you cool win the, Zump, you win the Mike Disney print. Nice. Zump, I, I may have oh. your address already, but please whisper to me your name and address. I think I may have it, but just to play it safe, it should be in my database for the Postal Service. Congrats to both the winners. Alyssa, Anna, thanks. What a great show tonight. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. For, yeah. Wonderful. And thank you, everyone who showed up for, for this first yeah. one. So it was a bit all over the place, but I hope it was fun and a little bit informative. And then we should dig it deep it into topics as we, we go along in future shows that will be more focused, so to speak. This Absolutely. was just to, to get things started, so to speak, to get the ball. And if you haven't guessed, Anna and I are doing good cop, bad cop, and future shows. <laughs> oh, yeah. We will. Cup, yeah, we will. Yeah, we will go on like crazy and dig way too. We we because Alyssa and me, we think way too much about stuff like this. So especially me, overthink things five times. Wait more until we grill our worst clients. Oh, oh yes! Oh God! Gosh. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! That will be terrible. So, no, yeah. we're not going to be naming names. Oh, no, are yeah. we? Wolf no, gang. but we, we can, yeah, we, we have some <laughs> examples that should not be mentioned, so to speak. So yeah, but on the other hand, we have to give it. They are the ones that give us work, so to speak. So so they and our patrons. So so, but patrons, we have nothing wrong to say about because they just give us money and 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 tell us what to do and and then just yeah. So it's it's, so patrons are awesome. So Enoch Pratt, one last thing said. I need some Alyssa and Anna emotes. I will do them if I don't okay. get rejected for partner for the 25th time from Twitch. Okay. Uh -oh, so yeah. yeah, once I, that'll give me another 20 some emotes. I promise you I'll get those emotes. If we keep on, we keep on. Look at that. Now lawful stupid's rating us right here. This is great. Oh, man, really? The last minute. Last wow. minute. Lawful <laughs> stupid comes in. Lawful stupid Yay, is, is, is awesome. participating. Yep. Thank you so very much. Uh, we have to stay stupid. on for a couple of minutes. Just I'm going to stay on for two minutes, Lawful Stupid. Then we're yep. going to raid into Nightheart Gaming as Nightheart yep. Gaming is doing a fundraiser event. We're just finishing up with Alyssa and Anna, but thank you. Uh, some things I'm going to – I'll do a couple things here. Cannon Fire Discord um, it, um, is, it, it should have popped up. Didn't that pop up? Cannon Fire Discord, if you're interested in Grey yep. Talk, it's a great place to go. Greyhawk Online Discord, you just have to go through the Greyhawk Online website to get to that. And then Virtual Greyhawk Con Discord, sign up, start for DMing events July 1st. We're getting real close for our for yep. our con. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it'll be our second con. Greyhawk, Re, uh, Greyhawk Reborn's already coming in. Uh, I have the entire schedule. I put it out there for all the streamers that are involved. Waffle Stupid's involved. Mike Disney's involved. Blue Box. Praetor's Rejects, uh, you know, Time Lord's Wife, Stella Luna, I know I'm missing some, Wiley Hobbit, they're all involved, and that's just the stream part of it, three full days, 24, Armin, 24 hour coverage, but we're going to have all these events, and we're, we're inviting some big names, 
uh, from the industry to see if they want to DM some events. Alan Hammack already said he'd do something, which is great. So yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing if he'll do a Ghost Tower of Avernus that he wrote. So, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, really, thank you so very much for coming in, Lawful Stupid, from the, you know, I know you're streaming out of the UK. Um, just <laughs> caught the end of this here, but it's good because now we got a lump, even a larger lump sum of people that we can go into their heart gaming to a fundraiser event. So um, thank you so very much. Let's, um, Let's uh, head over there and uh, and really give them a massive raid here. Um, yeah. And uh, here we go. We'll, i got to hit the raid button. See you all um, next show in Thank about you. a month for this, but see you all Sunday night for a nice Gavin discussion. Yep. Um, see you soon. Good night. Bye. Great timing, Lawful Stupid. Thank you so very much as, yeah. we, uh, as we hit this up here. And uh, let's yep. raid in the night heart here. I'm good setting it up. I'd love to get to 100. All right, that's 77, that's 78, that's awesome. 80, 80. thank yep. you. 5, 81, 4, 3, 2, 1. See you Sunday night. Thank you, everyone, for the participation. Awesome. Yep. Pump up this fundraiser. Yeah. That's great.